and Adam K. the Brewmeister. Listen to the show anywhere in the free world at kmatalkradio.com. I like to smoke them like some Prince Churchill. Like John Kennedy, yeah. Remember Coach Red Arbach? Smoked up on victory, yeah. Well, you can take my wife, you can take my car, but you can't take my big cigar. My cigar. Good morning, loyal listeners, libertarians, lovers of the leaf, everyone out there in Radio Land. Welcome to another exciting edition of KMA Talk Radio, broadcasting live here in the lovely iHeart Radio studios of West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> I am Adam K., the Brewmeister, and with me, of course, as always, the host with the most, the man, the myth, the shrinking legend, Mr. Honest Abe. Good morning. Oh, I sound extra yeah. deep today. <laughs> Feeling robust. Right? Yeah, very robust. Whatever the setting is, somebody mark it down. Yeah. Okay. It sounds good now. I actually just lowered our volumes, and I lowered the master and raised the volumes on the individuals. It just sounds good. In. And, so of course, neat. there's uh, Paul. I'm kind of turning myself oh, hey. on. <laughs> All right. You actually, I actually do notice it in your face, to be what? honest, the weight loss. Yeah, it's getting there. I see it. I, I didn't have a good week this week, so I'm not thrilled to talk about it, but I dropped like a little over a pound. But you have those weeks when you just got to... But you dropped something. Like a pound and a quarter. Okay. But you didn't gain... And you didn't stay Yeah, the but same. you know, when you've had 30-some days of straight chicken and roasted vegetables, it's not like what you want to see, right? You know, so, it's like... Oh, so you didn't cheat, you just didn't lose. You know what? I I, I, did, I, I, did, I can't say this was my most stringent week as far as working out, definitely, because I just... I, I I dropped the ball completely on being active this week. Just a lot of crap happened this week. Oh, you, you, got, you get busy sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I might have not been the most stringent, but still, man, a pound, you know, is like, all right, but I'll take it. Because you know what? That just makes me say, okay, next week i got to go hit the pavement a little bit harder. So There you go. Motivation yeah. is what it's all about. But I do feel good. And, you know, <laughs> I've had some of the cool effects. Like, I, I went to, you know, Real Clips to get a haircut uh, last week. Last week, maybe? Or, yeah, last week, because I ended up having to go open up the store in the emergency next door. So I went next door after got, things got settled, went to go get a haircut. And, you know, we, all the barbers I know, they're regularly. So Pino's cutting my hair. Mm-hmm. And Pino's about to put his smock on. He goes, oh, yeah. It just doesn't fit. So he went to go get Ivan Smock because he has a bigger one because of my neck. And I got picked. Hey, try that thing on. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't fit? Whatever. And, 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 true story. He goes, bro, if it fits, I'll give you a free haircut. And it fit. <laughs> and I made him give me a free haircut. <laughs> Sucker. Wow. Yeah, so cool. I've dropped my ring twice. This ring is... Uh, I was going to say, your rings, your yeah, watch, you my, probably noticed yeah, that. Yeah, watch. Yeah, watch yeah, watches. I'll, yeah, I'll like, give you one of these little ring spacer things. Yeah, I, I, I dropped it twice one time in, in the lawn too when I was playing with a dog. Man. Uh, like, nightmare I'm finding like, it. My second daughter found it, man. My my second oldest. She's like you know a beast. You know, you give her a challenge. I, I've dropped my ring washing yeah. the dogs in the grass, and the grass here is a little bit different. It's that Saint Augustine weed, whatever. It, yeah. it, it's like so thick you cannot. I, I wrote it off. I'm like that ring is <laughs> gone, never. And the, my problem is, is like this is not like a normal ring, right? Because when we got married. My jeweler made me my ring as a gift, right? Which is cool because I didn't have to pay for it, but which sucked because <laughs> it sucked. Right, 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 right. As a ring. Right. I mean, he, he had good intentions. He kind of tried to make a cigar band ring, right? Which, you know, a cigar band ring, right? I'm going on a Friday night party in downtown Miami. I want to look a little cool. It's kind of a cool thing Was to it wear. like a real wide? Like, yeah, oh I got God. a picture. It's like a Like really, an Aussie band? It was a really wide ring, right? <laughs> it was just a monster, right? So like after a month or two, I just stopped wearing it, and I didn't wear it for 10 years. I haven't worn a wedding band for 10 years. So uh, for our 10th anniversary, surprised your wife uh, a lot. Uh, she's not like that. She's not that petty, you know. So, um, but mine either. <laughs> okay, and um, no, my wife for our 10th anniversary dug up the ring, right? Took it to a jeweler, had it melted down. So this is the actual original wedding band that right. she had melted down, and uh, it's really funny because she had to steal some of my room 101 jewelry so the guy could make the ring. And to the know guy, the size, and he said, "There's no way this is the size." Right? right. He said, "There's no yeah. way." And she's like, "Yeah, it is," and he's like. I want to meet this man. What, what right? size? He told my wife. What want, size? 15? Like no, it was like a 22. Dude, the largest ring 20, size. Maybe? I worked in jewelry at, at Tiffany's on Fifth Avenue. We had this conversation. The largest ring size I've ever seen on a human being was 17. Yeah. No, and it was like, an NBA star. I think it was 20. And, and, and you know you know those like metal rods, right? Like my thing goes like way off the, the scale. It's called right? the mandrel. Right, yeah. right. What does that go to up to 15? No, it, pro- it probably goes up to 16 yeah, or 17. Yeah, I mean, that's like my pinky it, ring right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so... Um, but yeah, so I didn't want to lose it because she put so much effort into it and, and, and kind of got it remade into something I would actually wear every right. day, you know, so that's that. Well, I'll give you, I have these little plastic ring spacers that Thank you, you can sir. use. 
I'd like to give a big shout out to our dear friend Skip Martin, who's oh, never in Florida. Oh no, here happens, we go. <laughs> it happens to be on the other coast, but he can never make it to the show. But it's all right. I We've just been I, having we a hard you have a time. Good time in Tampa, Skip. Enjoy. There's High a lot five. Of food, a lot of good food there. We, I, I said to if Skip, you like to see Skip, he'll be at the Columbia Restaurant this afternoon. I told him. I, I've even like offered like without your approval, Pick but I've up. offered to wear. Yeah, like get wear, the hell out of here. We'll get somebody to get him if he's somewhere. I'd send a moped, a guy in a vest, put a pick. That's him fine. Up. I don't I think, would, I don't I think he would be that. picky. Uh, right. I, you know, I, 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 I commented because you commented on his post today, I saw. and I, I said to him, "Skip, you're killing me, brother." Right. He, he's I keep, like, I'm never in Florida. I was like, Abe thinks that I'm the problem. No, 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 no. First off, you are the problem. Well, usually. But not, but not when it comes to Skip. The guy just doesn't want to come on the show. I don't know why. Because, ah, you know, he won't have the time to come up with his witty responses typing he on is, Facebook. He's funny, though. His comments Dude, are real funny. They're I, engaging. I, I've like, actually made the comment on Facebook, you are brilliantly funny at times. Because he makes yeah, comments. I saw, I saw. Brilliantly funny. I'm just checking to see if he's commenting at no, all. No, he won't. He will. He'll give you a, he'll give you a laughing emoji. That's what he does. <laughs> 99, point, 99 of every comment to any post we ever make on KMA is just a laughing emoji. The laughing, right? crying one. The, the the laughing, real... Oh, the dog got hit by a trailer and dragged five miles laughing emoji right and it's like <laughs> it's like his standard response for everything no matter what the topic well, not to chime in but his, his other favorite one is the uh, when he has nothing else to say is the shoulder shrug right what, right when google has failed yeah. right shoulder, shoulder, shrug. shoulder shrug i don't know Yes, for those of you tuning in now, that is the guest for today, our meet you maker for today's segment. Mr. He's John not Carney, officially here yet. Uh, Vice President of LaForte Minicana. <laughs> I was trying to get to that, but we got too much trapped. This moves wherever you want to put it in. I, I, yeah. throw, sorry. I, I, had throw a a I had to throw a shout out out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, it thanks. Happens. Thanks hey, for yeah. making my life thanks, awkward John, with him. For coming in. You know, see, I, I could only wait so long for an introduction. There was everything I wanted to talk <laughs> about. No, no, please. Talk about. <laughs> I was killing just it. That's, that's the point. It's, we'll give you an official introduction <laughs> later, but yeah. yeah, you can chime in at any time. It, it was killing me. There's really no organized <laughs> format for the show. You can jump in anytime. Yeah. And we're also not going to talk about cigars because you don't get the show. Sorry, Allison. Yes. Anyway, you. Poor every, Allison. Every Another week, call back. Every week here on KMA Talk Radio, we like to give wonderful things away. Our good friends at Recluse have the Recluse Caption Contest of the Week. Congratulations to Kevin Acuff of Pens- Peninsula, Ohio. He took home last week's five-pack. you want a five-pack of Recluse Cigars, head over to the KMA Facebook page and post your best caption on this week's photo. Which is now up on the screen. Ah. See, we're getting good now. Go. Hey. Look at this. Paul's figuring this thing out. I, you know, I was at the meeting, the mm. KMA meeting last night, the pre-show meeting, um, but I do like the caption contest. <laughs> That's a pretty funny photo. What is this chick doing? She's checking to make sure the gun is clean. Really? Yeah. She's Sometimes like, she's you got to look down, down the, barrel. the barrel of a gun. Oh, oh I saw it. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. <laughs> That's yeah. Darwinism at its best. Yes. Darwinism at its best is definitely what it's going for. By the way, uh, can you put on this camera real quick? I just want to show our cool new swag, yeah, right? On. Mm-hmm. There's a sip. There you yes, go. Yes, cool. KMA Talk Radio tumblers. Yes. They're thermal tumblers, yes. Got the sound wave and everything. And so my, my prank on Paul backfired, right? Yeah. So I tried to order him like a really like feminine mm-hmm. cup because I don't even know if it's like PC to use the word girly. But so I'll show it's it. It's all sparkly and supposed to be neat. It actually kind of doesn't look bad. It looks like either like a galaxy background or like a granite. I know? thought it looks like, like a nice, like a granite, like yeah, a manly it granite. Yeah, backfired. It kind of is kind of a cool effect. It's got so my name on there. We got the plain black ones and he kind of got the cool cup now. <laughs> Paul's got the starry cup. If you, this yeah. would be a custom order if you want one. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes. All right, every week but here, you can find them if you want them on uh, KMA KMA Talk Radio yep, com. Yep, yep, they're available for sale. Buy yourself. Yes. Great success. I made this coffee two days ago. It's still hot. <laughs> <laughs> I filled this up this morning at six a.m. when the baby woke me up, and it's still ice. There's ice in it, and it's still cold. It's, so. Yeah, these seem to work great. These are phenomenal cups. Uh, last week, <laughs> every week here at KMA, the Talk excitement Radio. and the enthusiasm is just brilliant. These are those cups, guys. Please shut up. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, if you'd like to win a Zycar prize from our good friends over at Zycar, it's a Zycar, Zycar XI2. XI2 American flag cutter is to match prize. John's hat. Yes. Uh, oh, nice. I'm shocked. Does the hat come with a cutter? No. Oh. oh, well, unless he wants to give it away signed. <laughs> I've been known to actually Ooh. give them away. Uh, <laughs> man, we could do that. I don't sign cigar boxes or anything. Oh. I don't sign things I don't make, but this is made in China. So I think that's <laughs> well, acceptable, I, right? I think with the sweat and the grime that you've instilled in it now kind of makes it officially like you've made it. Exactly. So you can get one of John's grimy used hats signed. Signed. <laughs> with the we'll matching Zycar cutter. How's that? How's that for an added extra prize? Here we are. KMA Talk Radio. Social media. Uh, alert. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Last week we asked you, do you wash your face in the morning? And amazingly, unlike Paul, 64% of you said yes. Dude, it's like I was washing my face this morning, right? 
Did you shower this morning? Or no, no, I washed my face this morning. I was woke up a little bit late. Woke. You know, my kids, I haven't had an alarm clock in literally like 10 years, right? Because as soon as you start having children, they're your alarm clock. I hear that, brother. Kids, but man, now they're getting a little older, so they're programmed not to wake up on Saturday. I can't wait for that. And it's throwing me off because I'm sleeping like through my iPhone alarm, right? So I, I'm not waking up Saturday as early as like a, during as you the week. Normally yeah, because yeah. I'm up at 6, 10, 6 o'clock every week, every right. Monday through Friday. So... Um, no, but I wash my face. I'm wa- wash. We had this conversation. Like, who washes their face? If you don't shower, how do you not wash your face? He doesn't wash your face. He does. All right. Dude. You know what? Let's. Not come. only does we were he friends not. for a little while here, and now. no, no, the hygiene moment now. I, not only does he not wash his face, he was like surprised. <laughs> Why would you wash your face? Uh, because there's crud and leakage all over your face from sleeping all night. Well, look, my, my thought of washing the face is whether you get a deep clean or not, just splashing some water. Something get the crud you up, and waking the, you up. Well, yeah. no, I can. You, That's you, what my I, coffee's for. I tear up. I got crud yeah. in between my eyes. Whatever. I need to wash my face. So it's sixty four percent. Do wash they the do. Yeah. in some manner, and then thirty six percent don't. No, but this is if you don't shower, right? Obviously, yeah. you don't shower, you wash. Shower. Your face. I, exactly. Yeah. I, when I shower, I wash my face. By the way, the thirty six percent. Trust me, it shows. Well. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so true. How many times have you seen people with crud in their eyes, like in, you know, in the morning? Yeah, twenty one percent actually said it depends on what I was doing the night before, and thirteen percent <laughs> of them said no. If I showered the night before, then why do I have to wash? My face? I, I think the next question for this week would be for that twenty one percent. What were you doing the night? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's also... You don't want to know. I think this question is also age-relative, right? Yeah. Because when you're young, it's different, right? When you get older, your body just seems wants to ooze and leak more at night. Do you notice that? Like, you wake up and say, what is this shit drooling out of my ear? Oops, sorry, drop. drop. It's okay, it's recorded. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can cut that out later. Wait, yeah. I swear then, right? <laughs> you no, can that, swear, but he's got to mark it. It makes yeah, a lot of editing. But it's like, what's this crud coming out of my ear? Right? Or coming out of my... Dude, I mean, you're it? living a different life No, me. dude. Old, when you get older, your body starts to ooze fluids at night. Your nose will drip while you sleep. I'm I mean, the oldest 35-year-old you've ever met. I think you've said that a few times, that I look like I'm I way older. I thought you were a lot older than John. That's yeah. why when I... Well, we, he we, obviously takes we care of himself. I mean, <laughs> since, I, since I grew the hair out, my age has dropped like 10 years. I'm back well, on my... Hold on. We're going to talk about wait, this. Did you, did you grow it out or was it, you know, I, I did 100% grew it out. I've so been grow my whole life. Yeah, 100%, I'm 100%. And you just chose to go bald. Chose to be bald. See, that's why we don't, we don't consider you part of the bald community. My man. No, I'm just saying. You work with pride. He's part of the bald community as far as I'm concerned. Every other day I got shaved. It was funny, the thing that's got had to be edited out there just a second ago. There was this great skit, if you've ever seen it. It was uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Fallon had Bradley Cooper on the late show, or the Tonight Show, right? Right, yeah. Them. So they're, they can't, the two of them can't stop laughing, and the show's recorded. So they're going through all this stuff, and it's like 10 minutes of just Jimmy Fallon and Bradley Cooper laughing like little girls. So they're, they're like, we're not going to get anything out of this, Fallon says to, to Bradley Cooper. So he keeps laughing. He can't stay serious. And he says, don't worry. They'll edit it and put it together nicely. Nobody will notice on the live show. Anyway, so the live show goes on. You have no idea that they got nothing done for 12 minutes. Really? It's like a, a one-minute segment they got from it, and it, there's a few laughs or whatever. Right. But if you watch it, you have no clue, and then you watch it after <laughs> what really happened for the 10 minutes. Right. So I... The magic of editing. It was it was amazing. So, I mean, that, that one slip-up can easily get edited out if they can edit that whole thing. <laughs> the, and, and, well, we, we used, but they have lots of, uh, lots of uh, now you financial know. power, too, to yeah, have a bunch too. of editors yeah. and people to do it but, quickly. But, you know, we used to be live, so if that came out, that would have went on... You know, terrestrial radio. Yeah, so, yeah. but the show actually not gets played tomorrow. So, right. Well, you just did it again, but you just I said it again. Him, yeah. Boy. Holy <laughs> cow! What, who are you? You take one week off, and now you curse yeah, every five man. minutes. Sorry, Mark, Colin. Mark, Mark, but he, but he did wash his face this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. With I, a rag. The with a rag. rag? Uh, so yeah, anyway, man, I got a little oh. soap and soap up my face. If you'd like to win a Zyker XI2 American flag cutter, head over to the KMA Talk Radio Facebook page and John Carney's hat signed and signed John Carney hat. Uh, who do you think will win the 2019 Masters is this week's poll question. Because that starts on Thursday. I hope one of the answers is who cares. <laughs> is it? No. no. That's like the, That would be the number one reply to answer. Well, hold on. There's another answer that's funny. The field? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, really not funny, but okay. That was, that was Adam's <laughs> edition. Yeah. Adam actually came up with the question. Yes, because golf is wonderful. So anyway, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to have more with John Carney and a lot more all here on KMA Talk Radio. Keep it lit. Oh, that's You're funny. listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Want to be in the know and lift your cigar game? 
Join the Monte Cristo Social Club and stay connected with the latest cigar news. Discover events near you and see what's trending. The Monte Cristo Social Club is the place to stay connected to get the inside scoop and feel like an industry insider. Members can look forward to exclusive members-only benefits, special discounts, and details on how to gain VIP access to some of the most extravagant cigar events. New members receive an exclusive gift just for signing up. The Monte Cristo Social Club. Get in the know. Cigar Enthusiasts. Did you know your personal freedom to enjoy a fine cigar is affected by some form of smoking ban in all 50 states? Additionally, taxation on premium cigars is at its highest level in history, with some states taxing at an astronomical rate of 75%. Finally, there's a solution. CRA, Cigar Rights of America, is the first and only nonprofit public advocacy association fighting for your freedom to enjoy a fine cigar. Don't just sit there. Become part of the solution. Become a CRA member today. Membership is only $35 a year. That's less than $3 a month. And as a special bonus, CRA will send you two limited edition cigars as a way to say thank you for joining. Visit CigarRights.org for more information and to become a member. Hello, this is Glenn Case, owner of Christoph Cigars. Smoking a cigar is all part of the experience. For me, there's nothing better than gathering with friends after an amazing steak dinner and smoking my GC Signature Series paired with a fine glass of scotch. Good conversation and a few laughs is always better when smoking Christoph. Start enriching your downtime. Go to Christoph.com and click on the Discover Your Christoph tab to find the Christoph cigars that are right for you. Upgrade your downtime with Christoph. The Oliva family, the makers of some of the most affordable yet highest rated premium cigars available. For seven straight years, Cigar Aficionado has rated Oliva as one of the best cigars of the year. And Oliva has a cigar for all smokers. From the newly released Gilberto Oliva Reserva to the bold and rich Oliva Siri V. Oliva cigars can be found at a tobacconist near you. So always ask for Oliva. An unbeatable value and uncompromising quality. The Oliva family of cigars. The recently released Perdomo Double Age 12-Year Vintage is an extremely rare blend of Perdomo's finest and most cherished 12-year-old fillers, binders, and wrappers. Bale aged for 10 years and then barrel aged. In bourbon barrels for an additional two years, these exquisite Nicaraguan tobaccos are bursting with rich, complex flavors. Offered in Connecticut, Sun-Grown, or Maduro, available at only 250 authorized tobacconists worldwide, the Perdomo Double Age 12-Year Vintage is a must-have for every cigar enthusiast. Introducing the H. Upman Connecticut Grupo de Maestro, a redefined Connecticut that exhibits a fuller and deeper flavor, combining over 200 years of cigar making and refinement. The Grupo de Maestros, a brotherhood of master blenders, inspired to create a new definition of a time-honored legend. This collaborative H. Upman features a robust blend of luscious filler, including a layer of specially cultivated pilotico tobacco or an incomparable Rich complexity. The H. Upman Grupo de Maestros defined heritage, redefined Connecticut. For 500 years, Nicaragua has served as a crossroads of cultures. Ever since indigenous inhabitants mocked arriving Spanish conquistadors in a colorful costume satirical masterpiece called El Huehuense, or The Wise Man. This great dance continues today in the careful blending of Nicaragua's finest tobacco. Master blender Nicolas Melillo has worked tirelessly to create and honor the great dance of flavors in El Huehuense cigars. Visit FoundationCigars.com. Welcome back. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio, broadcasting live here in lovely West Palm Beach, Florida. I am Adam K., the Brewmeister. With me, of course, the man, the myth himself, Mr. Honest Abe. Hello, hello, hello. hello. And, of course, Paul. Hello. And I got such great announcements last time when Abe wasn't here. Like, you were giving me, like, little nicknames and stuff. Now that he's here... You can't pay attention I, to I me. I have to use all my good stuff with him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a ask KMA during the break. We did. We got three minutes. Go ahead. Well, which was, what was, uh, when is Adam, Quentin Thor Nation said, when is Adam going to get his massage? Right? What, how did that come about? Did we say we were going to send him in there to test one out or something? Yeah, because Adam and I both have not been to those uh, massage parlors that Neither we spoke I. about. <laughs> in my <laughs> and, life, ever. 
And we said Adam's the single one here, so we could send him there, and he can he give can us do like a documentary, an account, yeah, on on what actually happened. I'll bet you big money we could send him there, and nothing will happen. Stop it! It's high probability. Isn't there a way it's to like high ask for what you need? Like I, I I've heard that there's things that you say Dude, in you, order to you get. You really what don't you need. have to do anything. I mean, really, it it's kind of takes some effort to kind of screw. It. They'd have to really like be afraid and think that like you're a narc to not do anything. So why would I look like a narc? That's just Adam's luck. Oh, Adam. That's yeah. just Adam's luck. Oh yeah, he does look official. He was in the presidential motorcade. Yes, he was. Let's not forget that. I Did do you know that, that about Adam? Presidential he clearance. He yeah. drove in the presidential motorcade. It's amazing. Twice. <laughs> now, then you're definitely not the person to send right? your documentary and, right. on and the And Abe's known him for ten years, and he just found out once the, for, for the first time last year. We all year. found out. Yeah. We freaked out. He mentions it. I just spilled coffee all the crazy. <laughs> he mentions it nonchalantly on the air. So, did, right, uh, we're in the middle of a show. It's like, yeah, back when I drove in the presidential motorcade, like, we had to stop what? everything. Stop. So, uh, I, we had a similar thing that happened with my family. It was like this last year. They told you you were adopted? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but it was a presidential one. My dad, when he was a child, this just randomly came up like 60 something years later that he did the Easter egg hunt at the White House. What? How did that happen? I, th- this family just took him down on a vacation and they went and did my grandma, uh, grandmother and grandfather took him down and he, they did Easter egg hunt at the White House. So we're sitting there and he brings it up and he's like, oh, there's pictures from the, the Easter egg hunt at the White House that we went to. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, they just randomly bring that up. Right. Uh, but Motor Kid. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. Like accidentally, Twice. were you arrested? Twice. Yes. <laughs> Twice. No, he was selected yeah. to bring Twice. the press. Wow. Listen, I will tell you this. I'm not lying. I've been, I've been on road trips with him. Mm-hmm. Adam, without a doubt, is probably the best driver I've ever seen Because drive. he drives with no personality. Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't lane change without a signal. He actually doesn't even lane change at all sometimes. Um, <laughs> Unless there's a ladder coming I, at if you If I'm on, on a road street. trip, I could sleep the whole way and not wake up once because the car never even rocks or sways. He, he literally is, I'm the most comfortable in being a passenger when he's driving. The, there's plenty of drivers in South Florida that, that drive just like that, that drive me absolutely. No, well, he doesn't they, drive bad. Drive he miles doesn't. An hour. Do you no, least stay in the correct lane? He doesn't yeah. under speed. He doesn't yeah. over speed. He just goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm very aggressive. Because the, the, the last thing you want to do when you sleep in a car ride is have somebody who's slamming on the brakes and your head's hitting the dashboard every five times and... Uh, yeah, For career, me. I'm a professional passenger. And when you're, <laughs> you do. When you're a professional, I love, yeah. You do. I love but, that. But it changes the way you do look at driving. When, when I'm physically driving, yes, people are driving me nuts like on you. the road. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, an, like I'm an ass. When I'm. When I'm with my my salespeople, or I'm driving with someone, I, I mean, I, I am real picky. I got I got guys that are like the brake pressures when you're at the stoplight. They just keep hitting the brake. This fascinating oh. thing brought to you by La Forte Dominicana and <laughs> KMA Talk <laughs> Radio. Keep it got to take a break. <laughs> you're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram too. Yes, it's mandatory. We are family. Stop right there. A, I hate the song. B, I can't sing. Dan Blunt here for Alec Bradley Cigars. I'm making a point, though, and that's Alec Bradley Cigars is a family operation. Alan Rubin named the company after his two sons, Alec and Bradley, when they were just tykes. Now they're grown up, working alongside their dad, making the best damn cigars you ever smoked. So join the family. Alec Bradley Cigars. Follow the legend to Nicaragua. The Monte Cristo Nicaragua series is the latest addition to the extraordinary legacy of Monte Cristo. Blended in Nicaragua, the balance of this cigar is undeniable. And now it's been awarded a top 10 cigar of 2018 by Cigar Aficionado. This exquisite and complex 100 Perfect Puro uses only the best tobacco, combining body and flavor for a stellar appearance. A unique smoking experience that is now a top 10 cigar of the year. Monte Cristo Nicaragua. Two legends coming together to create one legendary cigar. Tobacco legend Julio Aroa and his son Justo Aroa bring back the authentic Corojo and Aladino cigars. A true Cuban puro, giving homage to original vintage Vitolas. Aladino cigars are also available in a dark, rich Maduro wrapper. JRE Tobacco has an unwavering commitment for consistency and quality. Experience our commitment to excellence in any one of our three lines. The Aladino, the Rancho Luna, and the Tatascan. Light up a JRE cigar today. Visit JREtobacco.com. Cigar enthusiasts, did you know your personal freedom to enjoy a fine cigar is affected by some form of smoking ban in all 50 states? Additionally, taxation on premium cigars is at its highest level in history. 
with some states taxing at an astronomical rate of 75%. Finally, there's a solution. CRA, Cigar Rights of America, is the first and only nonprofit public advocacy association fighting for your freedom to enjoy a fine cigar. Don't just sit there. Become part of the solution. Become a CRA member today. Membership is only $35 a year. That's less than $3 a month. And as a special bonus, CRA will send you two limited edition cigars as a way to say thank you for joining. Visit CigarRights.org for more information and to become a member. Hoya de Nicaragua proudly announces the release of Cuatro Cinco Reserva Especial, a carefully modified recipe containing a unique and exceptional selection of barrel-aged grade-A fillers and a beautiful silky shade-grown Habano wrapper. From the legendary Jalapa Valley, produced in small quantities, this exceptional medium to full-bodied cigar will continue to captivate consumers with its rich Nicaraguan complexity, subtle woody and sweet flavors, and a velvety finish. Try a Cuatro Cinco Reserva Especial today. Since the dawn of time, the universe has been constantly evolving. Now experience the evolution of flavor. Sindicato Cigars, available in Ecuadorian shade-grown Carrojo and San Andres Marron wrappers, are beautifully crafted by master blender Arsenio Ramos. Using a double-leaf binder and meticulously box-pressed, Sindicato Cigars provide the perfect draw to deliver the evolved flavors you won't soon forget. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Sindicato Cigars. CLE Cigar Company presents CLE Cigars, Eroa Cigars, and Asylum Cigars. With four generations and over 120 years of experience in tobacco, from seed to smoke, these cigars are produced in Honduras and Nicaragua with the utmost care and precision possible. CLE Cigar Company introduces a vast array of tobaccos in various sizes to bring the highest quality of premium tobacco direct for your enjoyment. Visit CLECigars.com for more information. Welcome back. You are listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio, broadcasting live here in West Palm Beach, Florida. I am Adam K. the Brewmeister. With me, of course, Mr. Honest Abe. Good morning, Paul the producer. I'm freezing over here. I made it nice and cold for Abe, but now I'm dying. I'm comfortable. I figured. Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> anyway, now since we're in the bottom half of the hour, it's time for which we consider to be our favorite part of the show. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell. It's time to meet your maker. This week, KMA Talk Radio is pleased to welcome in La Florida Minicana, Vice President of Sales, Mr. John Carney. It's a pleasure. Is that my official That's your official, official introduction? Official intro, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So. After you get the scream and the whole meet your maker from Duffy. You have arrived yes. now. You are officially now on the show. <laughs> yes. When I got the hard close there at the end, that's yeah. when I knew I was really on the show. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's the breaks <laughs> hey, of radio. You one gotta of the get guys. The hard out. Well, glad to be here. It's been uh, we've been talking about it for a while. Uh, I brought it up many years ago. I haven't seen you since a great smoke, right? Uh, no, right? no. I've been uh, I've been all over the place since then. We had uh, Tobacconist Association of America down in the Dominican Republic, like totally alcohol all time. Uh, you know what? This was like the tamest year. That's, That's what exactly I said. what Adam said. Ever. No. You know, I, and I just was, I've been traveling since then. I haven't, I've this first time really back since the, the TAA. And I've run into a few of the retailers, and everyone that was there had said this was like so tame. Um, so there was, was never a Bloody Everybody, Mary er, bar. Er, everybody's getting older. They are. They are. I mean, and, and I hate to say it because I've been, I've been asked, hey, why do you think? And I'm, I'm one of the younger ones there. <laughs> um, but they're like, oh, no, you know, this thing's changed. I'm like, no, everybody's just visibly, you know, everyone's just getting older. And you're, you're slowing down with things. And you know, how many more not times everybody's do you Rocky, Not everybody's Rocky Patel, right? No, no. <laughs> and, you know, even his party, even his party this year was a little more tame. Than, what, than they were serving O'Douls? What are you talking about? <laughs> you weren't even there. They were I, I, serving I, I, O'Douls. I, 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 had, I, had, I had a dinner obligation that Yeah. Evening. How are you commenting on it then? Yeah, that's my Because he heard. Well I, well, I showed up after, <laughs> and everyone was in like... Everyone was still sober. Was Something's fine. wrong. Yeah, everyone was It was fine. like a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. They, were, uh, they were in their pajamas saying goodnight. Is this April goodnight. 1st? It was a far cry from three years ago, and I was getting <laughs> Patron tequila t- uh, poured down my yep. throat oh, yeah, and called yep. a baby if I didn't do it. That didn't start until like midnight... Nish started asking for a bottle of 
uh, Don Blanc. Yeah. Yeah, I Blanc. always try to Irish goodbye because it's usually the night before we actually do business. That the, the, conveniently they tr- uh, oh. schedule it right before the actual Get everybody point trashed. of being there. And uh, so I always try to Irish goodbye. And that that evening it was it was not happening. They had you posted up everywhere with a bottle of tequila. That's funny. Nish is actually going thirty days alcohol free. Sure. April. He's trying. Sure. It's really sure. funny because there's minions and spies out there. Nish is doing it too. No, Nimish. Sorry, Nimish. Nimish. Yeah. No, but there, he drank minions. at the TAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. just told me April he's going 30 days. And he goes, if he does it 30 days, he's going to try to push it all the way to IPCPR. But it's funny because there's little spies and minions oh, out there. I get these little texts and he's limited. Nimish is eating tacos and heading key lime pie <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> I get it all the time. It's that, hilarious. That was everybody. a Facebook comment at TAA because you had posted your meal plan. And then the first word <laughs> says, I'm on. sitting with Nimish right now and he's eating tacos. <laughs> Yeah, hang on, wait, wait. was that you that sent it? No, oh. no, but I saw it. It popped up as a riot. He was. I was sitting across oh the way. God. He's sitting eating tacos, and his his response back was, "Oh well, you know, it's kind of tough. It's TAA. I'll get started when when I get back." Oh wow, <laughs> you know, he, you know, he just texted me uh, two sixty. Because I told you he's gonna start. He did, like took the whole month of March off, like it didn't exist, right? So he started. He probably gained weight from the starting weight, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But he said he was gonna start hard in April, not drinking. He's dropped nine pounds in five days, eating 800 calories a day. <laughs> He's going to get worn out, though. Your wow, body yeah. needs calories. Yeah. You need to eat yeah. calories. But, um, hold on. It's going to be fun to see him in a yeah, drag. Yeah, here, here's the pose, right? Nimish lunch today with burgers and chips plus oatmeal stout and lime pie. <laughs> <laughs> These are the messages I'm getting. And meanwhile, Abe, stout. Abe is sending donuts to Steve Saka's events, like like beautiful, gorgeous donuts. Sakalicious. I, I think there's no way, and I'm not just saying it was a series, I would tell you straight up, there's no way you don't win this thing. You, your drive the field, to actually the get field this is done. weak. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah I, the I don't field know. is weak. I, is Saka <laughs> so- so- participating in it, or is he just a bystander? <laughs> no, Saka, so- Saka, so- Saka. So- so- listen, he hasn't posted his weight loss, but he has. I, I know. Yeah? yeah, he did. He did once. Did he? Okay. So- 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 he did, yeah, because he was complaining because he's down 21 pounds. I said, dude, you're 21 pounds less of a curmudgeon you was three weeks ago. Stop your whining, <laughs> right? But no, Sock is going to operate under the radar. He's going to do his keto stuff and walk around in the mornings. And I bet you, I, I bet you, Sock will make it because look, he's a driven hard guy. Yeah. But he will milk the whole. Oh, woe is me! On I'm shopping road. for dresses and shows. <laughs> like for the next two months, we're going to have to listen to that. <laughs> but I bet you he comes under the cut. I think Nimish is going to have the problem because if he, if he can stay away from the booze. I think he could do it. Well, he he just he also he has loves more, drinking. Yeah, he also has more negative influences around him. Like Rocky. Yeah, well, I'm not <laughs> saying, uh, the, the whole the whole Nimish. group, right? right? I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? all negative influences. Right? That's funny. So very. True. So you said you you're one of the youngest guys at TA. You married? No, no. Uh, not is that why you're always smiling? Not mar- <laughs> well, when, when you were talking about the ring situation, I looked over at Adams like we don't have that problem. No. Uh, but I mean, I, I mean, yes, I'd like to be married someday, but no, I haven't. I've the last. I mean, I've been with LFD now for uh, almost exactly eight years. Wow, long time. Uh, yeah, long time. That, that could be a record for them. It all. Oh, I, I, the record's been gone for about six years. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, I mean, I love Lido, but I mean, they had the highest turnover of any it, a company I've ever seen. Right. It's like every you know, time I take, flavor of the month. Who's working for Lafleur this month? It, right? Yeah, it used to be that way, and right. um, you know, I'd say the last seven years it hasn't. Um, but no, every time I take the court, I break a record. So let me ask you a question: <laughs> What is it you think you? Because I mean, I'm not. I'm not even exaggerating. Prior to you, there's probably three or four. Guys who had your position for not that long of a time, right? What do you think you did differently that, that it's worked out with your relationship with LaFleur? So I have a really strong relationship with Lido and his wife Inez. Um, they're co-owners. Yes. Um, you know, and I work directly for her. So I, you know, the relationship. That, that's kind key. of really a testament to him, right? Yeah. Because he works day in and day out with her, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I'd be suicidal. Well, you know what? I I, I grew up in. <laughs> Could you imagine? I grew up in a family business, and I worked with my my mom, my dad. I worked for my sister. Uh, for a oh, period of time no. when I was younger. Listen, I, siblings is still different. Uh, Spouse uh, is a whole yeah. different anomaly. I, I was so short-staffed one mm-hmm. time. My I, Literally, like everybody moved, quit, whatever at once. I'm like, I found myself running a, one of my locations with nobody there. My wife actually quit her stylist job and came to work for me for three months. Oh, my God. I can't Ooh, imagine. I was, started, I was looking for homeless guys in the street. Hey, you want a job? <laughs> yeah. so seriously, because you... There's no separation of church and state, right? She doesn't say, like, this is a job. You're like, It's like, honey, you can't do that. Oh, you're telling me what to do? Right. It's right. like, oh, hey, yeah, I am. You're at work. I mean, Here I'm your boss. Oh, my. That doesn't I, work. Not even boss. Just, just you know, 
more knowledgeable coworker, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. And it was like the worst. It was like, it, I mean, God bless her because she's probably watching. We get yelled at, but you know, it was a very anxiety like three or four months. I'm right? sure she would agree that it was. Too. Well, listen, I'm by, I'm by far not the easiest guy to work with either at most times. So no comment. But, yeah, no comment. But I mean, you <laughs> but, know, but no, I would say, I would say, I don't know how Lito does it. I, I grew up around watching family work together, so I understand what they manage and what they have to deal with. I would give a testament to how it works out well for them. Is they do have separation, like I, they interact with each other differently uh, when it's business discussion and when it's not. And you can being around them now for eight years, you, you know when it's on and when it's not on. That's a very unLatin thing, yeah. Oh, right? huge, huge. That I'm gonna let my wife huge. do my partner, right? It's it, it, a yeah. very unLatin American. It, 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 and it is tendency. truly impressive, and it's, it's something that's really different in any industry or any business in general or just life in general. But, no, it works out really well, and I, I would say for me the understanding of how that works and that dynamic has been something that's worked well for me for the last, you know, eight he, years. Lito also seems, though, like such a, like... Laid a, back? Yeah, like a laid back, You have to be. Yeah, he's, got, he's on a Prozac constant drip, right? <laughs> I, you I have mean, to be. <laughs> there's... there's, you know. there's, there's Lito is is a real laid back guy. However, he's also very very type A personality. So is his wife. Um, when you get to see Lito on on you know on fire is right. at the factory. I mean, I watch him undress people uh, verbally in a curing barn just because it smells a little different. It's like, oh, really? why does it smell that right? I mean, he's very very anal. Uh, about the product, the quality, the consistency, um, which is funny because you get to see both sides of it, and you don't generally, you know, out in public get to see that side of Lito because it just wouldn't happen. Right. Oh, uh, and the way he interacts with us is yeah. very different. Yeah. It, oh, when you're when you're when you're messing with the product, if there's something <laughs> not right, you you just watch. See, I'm the type A, out. and my wife is like type Z. Right. I mean, like we're totally opposite on the spectrum. Everything's laid back. It'll work out. Yeah. Like when we go on vacations. Like, I know what restaurants we're going to go to, what, what days we're going to go to what restaurants for dinner. Like, I'll map the whole thing out. She likes it, and she doesn't like it, right? It works out great for her because she doesn't have to think about anything. Mm-hmm. But then when she gets tired and we're on a itinerary that actually requires, like, some time, right. you know, it doesn't work out well for her. But, yeah, no, it's been a great eight years. I said it. I, I think that's the big difference um, has been just my upbringing, the background that I had. When I said we own our own businesses growing up. So you, you, have, have that. you have a better understanding of their dynamics, you think, than your predecessors. Oh, absolutely, 100%. And that's not something negative on them. I wouldn't bash anyone who was in here previously. They, they all set me up for success over the years, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, understanding who you work for is an important thing. I think you would agree, right, Adam? Of course. Yeah. Adam's still trying to understand me. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's part of it. Don't also too like I, I learn new things every day, and, and interactions change. People grow, uh, and you got to be willing to be a part of that. And I, I think that's been a big part. What about of our Tony? Success. What's Tony doing? Like t- Tony kind of like flares up, right? You don't hear from him for a year or two. All of a sudden, he works on a project. Is he involved or just kind of like you know? So uh, on off. Yeah, Tony. No, uh, Tony's a hundred percent involved. Uh, the reason you don't hear a, hear a ton from him out on the road is he's spending three to four weeks um, at a time down at the. The factory, so he's working at pro- on production with his father. So he, he's, 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 is that what he likes? Is he really into the oh, production huge, end of it? Huge, huge, right. and, and you know, and it really is unique because that's, I mean, that's essentially what we're selling is the product. Absolutely, so that's the most important side. Right. Of it. Yeah, we we have. It's the least glamorous side of the job, though. It is. It is yeah. uh, in regards to the visual side, of right? It. But yeah. I mean, ultimately, if you look at it, the, it, it really is the most glamorous side because if the cigar is not good, nobody's going to buy it. Um, so that side of it's unique. And he's That's really not glamorous. Creative. That might be self-rewarding, right? He feels yeah, rubber, yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, it, it, it just, it's really funny because for a while he was really quiet. And then all of a sudden he was out there. Like he made a, you know, was talking about a couple of projects that he was involved in. Right. And he just more quiet. I haven't seen him in a while. When he came out with the chapter right? series. Yeah. And everything. Yeah, and Lenox. Yeah. And, you know, and also us as a company, the last three years have been going through a really significant time of demand increase. Um, and we're, we're a relatively small brand. Um, we're not we're not Coke and Pepsi, but our brand recognition is massive, um, and the demand for the product has been exponential compared to what we're able to make. So really, the last two years, it's been kind of quiet in terms of new items, new releases, uh, because mainly we've been doing a, a massive factory expansion. We're going to add about forty percent more uh, product this year, um, and it took two to three years to do that. But yeah, Tony's really dedicated to the manufacturing side. He does get out and do some events. He travels around. Um, and does some things like that, but yeah, you'll you'll start to see in 2019 this year where where they you, know, you start to see that ramped up a little bit with with new projects, different things going on, and uh, and kind of being I, able to step away from that. Expansion. I like that you've teased that because there's an interesting project I already know about that we talked about a couple of weeks ago in the Dominican that we're going to talk about next when we come back here on KMA Talk Radio. Keep it lit.
You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Hi, this is Nish Patel from Rocky Patel Premium Cigars. I want to introduce you guys out to our Old World Reserve Corojo made in a Honduran facility. What a beautiful medium-bodied cigar. When you light it up, it's got a gorgeous white ash, and you get that sweetness from that delicious Corojo wrapper, a little bit of spice, and a lot of nuttiness. Go to your local brick and mortar, check out the Old World Reserve Corojo. You will not be disappointed. Again, what a delicious cigar. For hundreds of years, the indigenous people of the Dominican Republic took tobacco and rolled it tightly into palm leaves. These long cylinders of tobacco, called yagua, created different, unique, robust flavors and aromas, and that original tobacco is now, for the first time, featured in La Aurora Dominican DNA. Full-bodied, robust, spicy, and elegant, La Aurora Dominican DNA is a return to the roots of Dominican cigar making that only La Aurora can provide. Look to the lion. La Aurora Cigars, king of the pride since 1903. Looking for something unique and awesome? Smoke Oscar Valdara Cigars. 2012 Connecticut. 2012 Corojo. 2012 Maduro. The Oscar Habano. The Oscar Maduro. My Way. And our latest creation, Oscar Valdara's Cicerone Edition. A great cigar that comes in five different collectible boxes with an amazing exclusive artwork. Remember, Oscar has something unique and awesome waiting for you. Ask for Oscar Cigars in your favorite cigar shop. Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust and its master ligador, Steve Saka, is crafting the very finest cigars available today. One such brand is his Todos Los Dias. This liga is very smooth with tastes of dark chocolate and figs with a nice sweet chili pepper that escalates in warmth as you smoke it. On the palate, it feels like a medium-bodied smoke, but it is lying to you as this cigar is quite strong. From the first puff, there is no doubt of the origin of Todos Los Dias or that it is intended solely for the seasoned cigar smoker. Viva Nicaragua! To Affinity and beyond, that is where Affinity Cigars will take you. These mild to medium cigars use only the finest select high-grade Ecuadorian Connecticut tobacco, creating a cigar that delivers a smooth, rich, creamy smoke with the gentleness of a mother's touch. Affinity Cigars have become America's go-to cigar for that flavorful yet unintimidating smoking experience. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer. Insurance companies have a very unique business model that the general public doesn't understand. Insurance companies make profit only one way, taking in premiums and paying out less on claims than they take in premiums. In doing this, they oftentimes deny legitimate people with viable claims fair compensation. We know accidents happen. They happen every day. The good thing about insurance is it helps people do the right thing when they've caused accidents. You know, if I cause an accident, the first thing I want to do is make sure the person is okay, the the person's taken care of. Insurance gives us the ability to do the right thing. Unfortunately, the insurance company uh, treats people like statistics instead of human beings. And that's why you need an experienced attorney to make sure the insurance company does the right thing. Baker and Zimmerman, defending the injured. 800-866-LAWS. Want to be in the know and lift your cigar game? Join the Monte Cristo Social Club and stay connected with the latest cigar news. Discover events near you and see what's trending. The Monte Cristo Social Club is a place to stay connected to get the inside scoop and feel like an industry insider. Members can look forward to exclusive members-only benefits, special discounts, and details on how to gain VIP access to some of the most extravagant cigar events. New members receive an exclusive gift just for signing up. The Monte Cristo Social Club. Get in the know. Welcome back. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio. Broadcasting live, I am Adam K. The Brewmeister with me, of course, on a stage. Yeah, I'm going to have to... Um, He's on fire already. No, I'm on fire, but I'm going to steal something from Brian Glenn, right? Oh, okay. So we're, we're going to have a derp of the day, right? Derp. Derp of the day. Derp That's what he derp. calls it. And, and Alan Rubin, the, the non-Alec, the, you know, the not real Alan Rubin. <laughs> yeah. He's my derp of the day, right? Because he makes this comment, which I'm perpetually hearing, right? The benefit of being home, it's easier to lose weight when you're not on the road every day. It's hard to eat healthy when you're traveling, right? 
So let me just clarify this for you, right? <laughs> oh, when man, you're you tra- opened up a Pandora's well, box. Is, I've heard this a lot. Like, like Steve like uses it as a major excuse in this little competition mm-hmm. guy going. But when you're traveling, you are alone. You make every decision. You can get a chicken breast at 99.5% of any fast food restaurant or restaurant in the country, right? Yeah. Now, I ain't saying you're going to eat the best or it's going to be the best tasting food, but you can eat healthy, right? Yeah. I'm at home. Do you want to know what my kids With were kids. eating for dinner this week, right? They had, she made shepherd's pie one night. Oh, she, oh dude, she made some, then they had Sunday bar night, right? Oh. Right. Yeah, they had bought all these topics. I'm, I'm looking at my wife like, do, do you not know what I'm doing? <laughs> I mean, could you not have them eat this before I got home from work, right? Are you kidding I, I, me? I, to boot, I make their lunches in the morning, which is semi-healthy, you know, healthy, right? But, I mean, my house is loaded with sweets, cakes, people bringing food over. So, and I, I, you know, that's where I live. That's where I come home. That's why I have this routine I do every night because right. I'm, I'm a grazer. I come home from work. I'll, if, if I haven't eaten at work, I'll take out my little meal and I eat at the table with them. And then I go outside to the lanai. And I don't come back inside the house until I go to bed. You got a TV out there too. I got a, TV, so you're yeah, I got a nice lanai, right? Yeah. So I got a little setup out there, whatever. So I sit outside <laughs> till I go to bed. So I don't have to go anywhere near the kitchen. Oh, fruit roll-ups and stuff like Whatever. that. Whatever. They got school snacks, day snacks, night snacks, AM snacks. I mean, <laughs> the travel the thing's good. Bagel bites, excuse. pizza snacks, pizza pockets. I mean, it's just, just the house is full of stuff. So, you know, you come to my house and you stay there for a month, Alan Rubin, and let's see how good you do. <laughs> Every uh, All right, so I've lost 25 pounds to start this year. Uh, and yeah, I, because I, you were so overweight and yeah. needed. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. But... I love, when I, thin people, done it I love when thin people, healthy people, tell me how good they're doing, right? But but every <laughs> hotel you're at has a fitness center. That's what I said. I, I travel even the, personally. Even the worst hotels. You, you, made a, you made a great point. When you're traveling, generally you're making almost every decision. Every decision. Period. And you're not exposed to, to any other influence, right? I, I, now, no. if you're doing events like soccer... That's a different story, yes. right? But Ellen ain't doing it. Even with it, I'm out doing events. I'm out right. doing all these things. Well, he, I, he coordinates food events, right? So Steve Saka does donuts. <laughs> true. You know, donuts true. Event, true. You know, a barbecue yeah, event. Yeah, that's your stick. Mine's, so like, a, mine's red meat. Right, right, yeah. He's actually doing like food events. But yeah. But, but you, I, I carry a gym bag with me. And I carry like gym equipment, so if they don't have things, I have re- resistance gear. So th- it, the fact that travel, no, that, that you Pilates. make a decision to bring the things with you, make a decision to spend an hour in the uh, on the treadmill when you get back, just physically make the time. By the way, you, there's going to be another it. cigar lounge to hang out at. Like you can go smoke a cigar right, at any time. Right, Take that right. one hour of the five you're going to hang out at the right. end of the night and just go on the treadmill for a bit, and then buy a chicken sandwich when at the Chick Fil A. Right when you're in an airport, man, instead of sitting and waiting 58 minutes for your flight, get up, walk around the terminal for an hour. Right, hundred percent. I mean, there's a million things you can do. So I'm tired of hearing that. So yeah, you're hey, Alan Rubin. Congratulations, you're the derp of the day. Derp. Thanks, Brian. Brought this segment you. brought to you in part by <laughs> Cigar Obsession. Cigar, Cigar Obsession. Cigar Obsession. <laughs> Make sure you check out Cigar Obsession for Brian Glenn's latest reviews and videos. <laughs> so the, the derp of the day was actually sponsored. Yeah, well, we just made it sponsored. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, we just made it sponsored. We kind of stole the idea, so <laughs> stole we should the probably idea, give so him some credit. credit. Yeah, that's what we did. So that's what we're doing. So anyway, a lot of people might not know, but this is the 25th anniversory this year of La Flor Dominicana. And wow, quarter of a century. Yeah. And you I like have, quarter of a century. It just sounds more epic than 25th It's kind of like year, world right? headquarters, Wait, right? Wait, quarter of a century. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's what I say now. Yeah, I've been in the industry for almost a quarter of a century. You know, it just sounds more epic. More, wow. Yeah. Are you sure it, you're not old? That's it long. is pretty epic, though, in my in my opinion. A quarter of a century? Well, yeah. you know, it's a quarter century. It's when you change words. You know, like, it's like say you have five people in this room, and you said, you've been, how long have you been in the cigar business, then? Uh, going on nine years. Nine years. I'm eight. Abe's been a quarter of a century. So mm-hmm. between the, th- the four of us here, we have almost forty years of we, cigar. Experience. We do that at our agency. I, I love yeah. it right. when they add the hundred years of no, experience. Right, right. Don't you right. absolutely do not? Right. When I, like when I right. add up all of my experience. My or a certain company that says they have two hundred years of experience in these people they're using. True. Right. True. Yeah. But yeah, twenty five years, which is pretty cool. It's been fun. I, I started with them at seventeen years. So uh, we, we in the cigar business, everyone celebrates ten. 20, 25. Yeah, I do the fives. Yeah, the that, fives. That's, what, that's what we do with our kids. They get parties on the fives. Yep. So right? 25 is a fun one. This will be this will be a really unique year. And you guys are doing a special release for this. That's going to be... Yeah, that. we don't we haven't released any details on it. However, we are Dominican Republic. Oh, so you're talking about it? Or you're not going to talk about it on the show? But we're going to talk about it. All right, there you go. So yeah. we are okay. going to do a 25th anniversary project. It'll be... Uh, It'll be 100% Dominican, all tobacco grown on our farm. Uh, Lito's been experimenting with some different growing techniques uh, where he will 
manipulate the amount of sunlight that some of the tobacco gets, which causes the plants to grow taller. Huh. And the leaves are bigger. So you utilize it for wrapper because wrapper tobacco is generally grown under shade. Um, if you would have a shade grown, right. I mean, in our, in the current climate of cigars, you have a lot of sun grown wrapper leaves just cause it's more flavorful. Uh, but wrapper tobacco grown in shade is, is really sought after. So we've been growing some shade grown tobacco with some different, uh, shade percentages over the last few years. So that'll be utilized, uh, on that unofficially as of right now. Uh, but that'll be a 25th anniversary project. It's going to be an elaborate project. Will, will it be uh, more of a traditional cigar? Because when Lido does these kind of projects, they're very artistic cigars, right? He's reads a lot of artistic looking likes cigars. Likes to do a lot of Salomon right, and multi, like Multicolored wrappers yeah. and stuff like that. Is this going to be an artistic cigar or more traditional? I think this will be a more traditional okay. cigar with, with just some of the more rare tobaccos. We haven't released a, an entirely Dominican cigar. Our, our LG line is 100% Dominican, a Dominican Puro. And we haven't released that in uh, roughly three years. Um, so there's a lot of tobaccos that generally went into that, which are which are some of our more rare and some of our higher rated tobaccos um, that will be that have kind of been stockpiled really. So that'll be featuring a lot of that. There's a um, perception out there that when the word puro is used, right, where it's all Dominican all on the ground, that it's some sort of moniker of something extraordinary, right? Is it really extraordinary about a puro cigar? Well, really, in your opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say yes. It, it, traditionally, there are cigars were made with, you know, Connecticut was where you got wrapper tobacco right. from. Uh, filler tobaccos came from Dominican and Nicaragua, Honduras, Philippines, you know, at wrapper, Cameroon wrapper came from Africa. Um, so it wasn't traditional in a lot of these filler growing countries to grow wrapper tobacco it just culturally wasn't part of it the dominican republic wasn't known for wrapper tobacco it's too sunny you can't grow it here you can't do we don't do shade grown here that's for connecticut um so that's really what was unique about it originally when you know Priros came out um you know opus x i believe was the right. first uh oh, that it definitely was, made head waves yeah dominican wrapper binder filler right. and uh and th- it just never existed so you, you just didn't grow wrappers culturally not but it's so did. common nowadays it right is, everybody's it, doing it so it, it is, but you know, it's it's more common than it used to be. I think it's more common in Nicaragua. I, I see more Nicaraguan puros right now, and Nicaragua over the last ten years has been real hot. It's been the hot that's country. That's mostly because it can grow the components pretty well there, right? Yeah, true, true. And you know, it's not hard. It's not wrappers not easily grown everywhere. You know, fillers aren't. I mean, Mexico like makes some great wrapper, right? Mm-hmm. But when you get past that, it's. It's so really good. challenging to grow wrapper right. in the Dominican Republic because yeah. it's really, really hot and it's really sunny during the growing seasons. So it takes a lot of legwork to grow it. So it's not. I mean, you could say oh, it's more common. Roof. It's more common. Just because it's more common doesn't mean that it's that it's no. It's I mean, easy I, to grow I, it no, in I the mean, right way. You know? yeah, everything's more. going well. <laughs> really like where this is all going. We're gonna bring it back. We're gonna have uh, more wrapper out already. Add a more wrapper talk here. And uh, more with John Carney when we come back here on KMA Talk Radio. Keep it lit. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. The Southeast number one club of the year is Spearmint Rhino. Enjoy $5 lunch specials daily till 3 with the best view in town. Really hungry? Take a bite of their 16-ounce New York Strip Special, only $14.95. Available daily until 10 p.m. Spearmint Rhino, home of $10 Tuesdays all day and all night. And now Thursdays until 8 p.m. Dances are $10. Spearmint Rhino is South Florida's adult playground. Mention at the door, Honest Abe sent you for free entry. For more information, visit SpearmintRhino.com. Lights, camera, action. Real Clips Barbershop brings you all that is good about old school barbershops in a new cinematic themed environment. Whether you need a traditional cut, fade, blowout, or even a straight razor hot towel shave, our master barbers will get you right. All while enjoying iconic scenes from some of your favorite movies. Right from our video screens built into the mirrors. Visit RealClipsBarbershop.com. That's real, R-E-E-L, ClipsBarbershop.com for a location near you or to make an appointment. After one visit, we know you'll be back keep it lit with kma talk radio cigar fairies making rounds yeah that's fantastic 
a brand more than 100 years in the making. Particulares was established in Havana, Cuba in 1895, operating as an elite factory that would later introduce the world to classic brands such as Byron, Particulares, and even Monte Cristo. Now, Sindicato Cigars is proud to bring this historic brand back to life, partnering with the legendary Topsa factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, to reimagine this Cuban classic as a modern-day Nicaraguan puro. Transport yourself to a bygone era of Cuban nostalgia with Particulares by Sindicato. For more information, visit syndicato.com. Hey, fools, how about a game of cutthroat? <laughs> it's your funeral. That's my kind of game. Arnold, I hope your pool playing is better than your choice of cigars. What do you mean? Wow, tough crowd. Here, try this recluse cigar. You're going to need all the help you can get. Don't be stingy. Let me get one of those. Recluse. Wow, that's a good smoke. Now I can bring my A game. I think you should stick with that recluse cigar and work on your B game because you don't have an A game. And I know a little something about games. Boom. Ooh, that's cold. Want to be in the know and lift your cigar game? Join the Monte Cristo Social Club and stay connected with the latest cigar news. Discover events near you and see what's trending. The Monte Cristo Social Club is a place to stay connected to get the inside scoop and feel like an industry insider. Members can look forward to exclusive members-only benefits, special discounts, and details on how to gain VIP access to some of the most extravagant cigar events. New members receive an exclusive gift just for signing up. The Monte Cristo Social Club. Get in the know. Quality and value are always the two biggest determining factors for consumers when making buying decisions. Casa Bella by Sindicato Cigars offers superior flavor, quality construction, and an affordable everyday price. Completely handmade in the Dominican Republic, these value-priced, smooth yet flavorful cigars are comprised of Dominican and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, and they're available in natural and Maduro wrappers. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Casa Bella cigars. Lights, camera, action. Real Clips Barbershop brings you all that is good about old school barbershops in a new cinematic themed environment. Whether you need a traditional cut, fade, blowout, or even a straight razor hot towel shave, our master barbers will get you right. All while enjoying iconic scenes from some of your favorite movies. Right from our video screens built into the mirrors. Visit RealClipsBarbershop.com. That's real, R-E-E-L, ClipsBarbershop.com for a location near you or to make an appointment. After one visit, we know. You'll be back. On a small farm. Nestled along a river in southern Honduras, grows an estate-grown tobacco so exceptional. Stop! Please! No moss! This is Dan Blunt for Alec Bradley Cigars. Some copywriter handed this to me, expecting me to read it. Good Lord, do me a favor, pick up an Alec Bradley cigar. Light it up, spend an hour with it, you'll be glad you did. We'll talk again real soon. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Insurance companies have a very unique business model that the general public doesn't understand. Insurance companies make profit only one way, taking in premiums and paying out less on claims than they take in premiums. In doing this, they oftentimes deny legitimate people with viable claims fair compensation. We know accidents happen. They happen every day. The good thing about insurance is it helps people do the right thing when they've caused accidents. You know, if I cause an accident, the first thing I want to do is make sure the person is okay, the, per- the person's taken care of. The insurance gives us the ability to do the right thing. Unfortunately, the insurance company uh, treats people like statistics instead of human beings. And that's why you need an experienced attorney to make sure the insurance company does the right thing. Baker and Zimmerman, defending the injured. 800-866-LAWS. Cigar enthusiasts, did you know your personal freedom to enjoy a fine cigar is affected by some form of smoking ban in all 50 states? Additionally... Taxation on premium cigars is at its highest level in history, with some states taxing at an astronomical rate of 75%. Finally, there's a solution. CRA, Cigar Rights of America, is the first and only nonprofit public advocacy association fighting for your freedom to enjoy a fine cigar. Don't just sit there. Become part of the solution. Become a CRA member today. Membership is only $35 a year. That's less than $3 a month. 
And as a special bonus, CRA will send you two limited edition cigars as a way to say thank you for joining. Visit CigarRights.org for more information and to become a member. Follow the legend to Nicaragua. The Monte Cristo Nicaragua series is the latest addition to the extraordinary legacy of Monte Cristo. Blended in Nicaragua, the balance of this cigar is undeniable. And now it's been awarded a top 10 cigar of 2018 by Cigar Aficionado. This exquisite and complex 100 Perfect Puro uses only the best tobacco, combining body and flavor for a stellar appearance. A unique smoking experience that is now a top 10 cigar of the year. Monte Cristo Nicaragua. Two legends coming together to create one legendary cigar. Since the dawn of time, the universe has been constantly evolving. Now, experience the evolution of flavor. Sindicato Cigars, available in Ecuadorian shade-grown Carrojo and San Andres Marron wrappers, are beautifully crafted by master blender Arsenio Ramos. Using a double-leaf binder and meticulously box-pressed, Sindicato Cigars provide the perfect draw to deliver the evolved flavors you won't soon forget. Visit SyndicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Syndicato Cigars. Welcome back. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio. Broadcasting live on this, a lovely April 6th. Uh, it's already April. Can you believe it? Yeah, dude. So we're almost at the halfway point of the year. I am Adam McKay, the Brewmeister, with me, of course, uh, Honest Abe. Uh, good morning. And the intrepid Paul. The <laughs> intrepid. <laughs> now, he, now he's a car. Mm-hmm. The intrepid. Mm-hmm. I, see, I was thinking about <laughs> no, that's a 90s a reference. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the I keep intrep- da- a Dodge I keep, Intrepid. Was right? Actually, keep, it was a cool car. I keep dating myself all the time. I think my aunt and uncle just got rid of their Dodge Intrepid. intrepid. <laughs> Right. Yeah, they love them. They love those cars. Also in our studio is our guest for our Meet Your Maker. Yes, Mr. Uh, John Carney of La Puerta yes. Americana. I need to clarify something I said during the break because like, I saw Paul wig out and I, we talked about it <laughs> off air. But I made a comment that our kids celebrate, we celebrate their birthday every five years. But what I mean by that is they get to have like a party every five years. Like a they, big party. Right, we friends. take them somewhere outside, they, whatever they want to do, right? So like we have like every year a birthday party for them, but at the house. So the in-laws come over, the relatives, okay, yeah. and they have a cake. But we, they get to throw a party party with their you know friends at 5, 10. Though I would normally say 15, but, I mean, it, 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 I mean, one of my staff had a sweet 16 for I mean, is they, they still do sweet 16s? Is that I heard. And people give cars and, and well, I mean, all yeah, that. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. We, we, we're, we're pretty uh, – listen, I, mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't have the guidebook to parenting, right? And, you know, you're going to go through – you're going to go through a lot of this. I'm, I'm trying to find a happy medium between the militant, you know, non affection emotional parenting I got growing up and some balance in there somewhere, right? <laughs> so, you know, we, tr- we we try to set standards, right? So, like, like Christmas is, you know, my wife and I kind of would always get in conflicts of this because my wife believes, like, oh, they should write a list and they should get, like, 10, 15, 20. What? I got one envelope when I was a kid for Christmas. That was, I got one from my uncle and one from my dad. Oh, really? That was it. <laughs> they didn't even go shopping, right? We got two envelopes, $100 bills each. That was it, right? And I, I was rich for like two months or six months at that age, right? Because I had 200 bucks, right? So, you know, we then we kind of Wait, found Santa a, brought you an envelope? Dude, my parents never even tried faking making us believe in Santa, right? It wasn't even an option, right? We came out of the womb, Santa doesn't exist. You're good, right? And it just went away. Oh what an awful existence. Okay, but you have to understand, my parents are immigrants, so mm-hmm. culturally, you know, Santa's not like a thing in the Middle East, right? You know, I mean, Christmas is, but... There's oh, not the equivalent of Santa no, in the Middle East? No, it's called Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Right? Okay. Over well, there, Christmas they're is... They're old school. Over, <laughs> yeah, they're really old school, right? So in the Middle East, in the Middle East like, Christmas... Wrong. I don't Christmas, think that's old school. Right. In Middle East, Christmas is, like, really a religious event, not, you know, Santa and Christmas, right? Not elves. It's, not, it it's, not, it's not the marketing machine it is here in America. It hasn't been so, taken over by Macy's. Right. Yes. So, so you know, I mean, I don't blame my parents. It just wasn't a cultural thing for them, right? But so, but we, we found a happy medium, right? Now we get our kids four gifts each, right? Something they want, something they need, something they wear, something to read. That's it. Really How simple. did you come up with those? I things? read it. I read it or heard it somewhere. I loved it. I read it by my wife. She loved it. So you need to you need to start developing these kind of mediums. Never, that's not going to happen. I, look, my I get more gifts than that from my parents still, and I'm 35 years old. I think you need to become a little more old school. Right. <laughs> to set yourself up for future success. Right. Right. No, because otherwise they're going to run wild on you, man. They're, 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 I see, what do you mean I see, they? I have one. Listen, son. Here, here's the problem. Today it's 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 that much harder. We're getting on a tangent here, John. Sorry, mm-hmm. but we do that on KMA. We oh. specialize on tangents. 
But, you know, it, it, today it, it's harder and it's easier to raise kids, right? Um, it's a little bit harder because, like, look, my, my, like, I got a call on my drive to work today. My wife's like, uh, you're, I forgot to run it by you, but your daughter, his friend, is have a, a gymnastics competition. The family wants to come pick him up, pick pe- my oldest, Petra, up, yeah. take her to the competition, you know, maybe they'll go out and get something to eat and bring her home. And, uh, you know, how do you feel about this? And, of course, I'm never thrilled about this because I don't know these parents. I never met them. Oh, right? so you I'm don't not, know them, yeah. I'm not exposed to them. I'm not right. exposed to anybody in the school system, right? So I said, look, I'm just going to deter to your judgment, you know? Just, you know, give her. We, we have one cell phone that my middle daughter carries because they go to tennis practice. They have a lot of outside activities. So I said, give her Zane's phone. It's a flip phone, not a smartphone. Right. Give her Zane's phone. Find out where they're going to taking her and what time they're going to have her back, Right. And she's like, well, I know you don't feel comfortable. I'm like, look, if I'm not going to let my daughter do I – mean, my daughter's like now turning 11 in a couple of days, right? Everything she's going to be doing in the next five years is probably going to make me feel uncomfortable. I'm right. going to lock her up exactly. in the room. I, don't you mean the next 20 years? <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> You're never going to be comfortable. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, we just got to deal with it the best we can. But if you know these parents, you think they're cool, and let her go. But find out where they're at so we can reach her, we can contact her if there's an issue or there's a problem. Chunky so, cheese. But, but, so, but, but, but here's the thing, right? You know, we grew up, we ran out in the streets, Right. I don't let my kids go to a public restroom alone in without public, knowing, right? Because right? we freak out. I mean, I'm just starting to let them play around the neighborhood without having to go outside and hang out with them. So we want them to be independent, but then we freak out because the world today is so different. And then the modes of communication coming in, forget about it, right? I'm constantly having to tell my my daughter, especially my oldest, where'd you hear that? I heard it at school. Do you know about it? Did you? Hear about it? You can't take every because they, they they're they're in this world where they think everything they hear is the truth, right? Right. No matter what, people don't lie. Right, and so, the internet is always right. Correct. So I, I have to teach my children to be skeptic, but not too skeptic, right? So it's it's that much harder, and you're battling it. So I formulate some kind of game plan eventually because it's it's hard. It really is about Christmas, about just the kids in general. <laughs> because because whether it's Christmas, whether it's going out, because look, we get a lot of compliments on my kids, and not going to no, most, they're they're very well most behaved. Of it, most yeah. of it's a testament to my wife, right? But but we, we, my kids are are like compared to all their friends are in like caveman electronic universe right there's no plea there's no Wii. there's no playstation there's no game box in my house right they have one ipad they all share they have one computer they all share when they need to use and it. i i agree with and that it's limited use right mm-hmm. there's no cell phones and they have one cell phone which is a utility phone it's not a social function it's not a right you know a, a entertainment function so but i believe that they're going to be better people for it right but it's hard because my daughters walk around, all her friends have had iPhones now. She's, she's turning 11. They've had them for three years. Yeah. Good question. Right? Do you, do your thousand dollar phones? Can you imagine at seven years old, your parents giving you anything that was a thousand dollars? No. Right. No, I mean, no. it's insane. And this is what you're going to battle. Right. Uh, but speaking of this, I need a raise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you, better, you better go check with your full time boss. Yeah. How do you? How do you manage? So you're very active social media wise. And things like that on your phone. So, how do you manage your time usage of the phone around your children so they don't see that as? I don't use it that much at home. Yep. So I'm not with them. Right? Do as I say, not as I do. That's how. Well, well it's no, worth. No, 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 no. But it is part of it, right? Because for for me, it, I really um, my phone is not an entertainment feature, right? So even even when I'm social media. Um, a lot of my posts are more business related, mm-hmm. right? I, I have probably like three or four thousand friend requests that I don't even look at because my personal page I put a lot of my family stuff on there because yep. a lot of my family's overseas, so it's a great way for me to communicate with them and mm-hmm. let them see what's going on with my kids' lives and myself. So unless I really know you as a person or you're, you're a friend, I kind of just don't even look at friend requests on my personal page, right? But yeah, it's a little bit of you know, look, I want you, you always want your children to be better than you, right? Like, I, I, I preach of health on my kids, right? I pack them lunches, right? You know, I, I don't want them to eat the school food, you know, the, the, the food, school food system, right? Because it stinks. It's awful food. So I will get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and I make them healthy lunches. So I want them to grow up with a better relationship with food and health than I did because, like, when we were kids, like, you know, we'd have a whole large pizza that was a single serving for me, right, growing up. And my parents didn't care because health wasn't, like... Right. A topic back then, right? Mm-hmm. My father, thank God we had a grocery store because we would have gone out of business, right? right. My, we had two boys, growing boys, and like cereal boxes were like single serving, right? You know, how, how many bowls do you get out of a box of cereal? One. You know, one eating, right? We we just like have four or five bowls for breakfast. That box would be almost gone. Wow. And that's, that's you know, my dad bought home boxes of groceries like every day. It was like routine at 5.30. My mom would call, my dad would call, she'd tell him what he wanted. We'd have one of the stock boys load everything up, put it in the car, bring it home, and that was it. So, you know, I'm trying to have my kids be better than me. So that's always part of the angle as a parent, right? But when I'm home, like, I, I, I don't bring the phone to the dinner table. 
You know, so I I try to lead by mm-hmm. example, but it's it's you just want them to be better anyway. You want them to have better habits than you. And yeah. just sitting down at the dinner table is something that I think is super important too. Well, I, I want to have yes. that because I had that growing up until until I was probably in like you know high school or whatever. But I always had that that interaction with my family every meal, single night. Meal time, and it doesn't happen every because you know they got violent, they got a lot of right, right, right. But at least three to four nights, as much as at you least can. three to four nights, Monday through Friday. Three or four of those nights a week, we'll sit down and have dinner together. It's a great time, but it's no phones, no friends call. It's, mm-hmm. just, it's not happening, right? So, um, and, and when we go out to public, because I'll take my kids anywhere. Like, if I want to go to Capitol Grill, we, we've been going with our kids like to restaurants like that since they were one year old, right? Every time we go, we go, we'll get a compliment from either the waiter or the people around us who will say, man, we saw you walk in with the four kids. We thought our They're night terrified. was terrified. Yeah, we thought our night was ruined, yep. right? But man, your kids are so polite and quiet and whatever, but that's all parental stuff because parents are checking out, right? Parents right. want the iPads and the computers to, in- to, to to raise the children. So as a new newly made father, that's just something you just have well, to work we're, on. Well, we're taking him out everywhere with us as well now, yeah. even at this age, and and I think it, it helps him because we go to places and there's babies screaming and crying. He, he goes to Disney with us. He goes out to dinner with us at nice restaurants. He just chills. Yep. He's very he's very comfortable Listen, around different people. I've, he doesn't freak out when when a stranger picks him up. When I've we, you know. seen parents let their kids just scream and, and they'll, they'll have a conversation with somebody and the kids out there screaming right right. Never never. My wife yeah. used to have this thing where you know she would have to take him to the restroom right because you, you you have to be careful about publicly scolding your kids nowadays because it's already happened to my wife. Some ladies, my wife took one was getting a salon right yeah. and one of the older kids was really really bratty and this is maybe they were three or four. And she warned her, I'm going to take you to the bathroom. So she took her to the bathroom, right? Because that's where she disciplines her and whatever. And the woman sitting in the chair next to her said to her, should we call the police? <laughs> she did. It's a true story, right? She said, should we call the police, right? Now, my wife comes back out. Daughter's perfectly behaved. No screaming, no yelling, sitting quietly, coloring a book, whatever. They go out. My wife was getting her nails done with her aunt. And I guess the woman who said it didn't know that. They were related Together. or whatever, yeah. So the aunt tells my wife what happens when she went to the bathroom. Oh, oh no. Day. Yeah, she goes oh, back no. inside, reads that woman a riot act, right? So, you know. <laughs> she took that woman to the restroom. <laughs> she really <laughs> disciplined her. I can't even, I can't, Colin would have to drop every other word. But I was going to tell you the conversation my wife had with this woman, right, for interfering. Right? But, you know, parents now detach themselves. They think it's okay. Let them be kids. You know? Oh, no. And, yeah. Know, I, don't, so I don't like that. My wife said something to me, which was one of the smartest thing I ever heard, and I've kind of implemented it on. And I don't even know if she realizes she's the motivator for this, but she's never talked to my kids gaga goo goo. Mm-hmm. Like, even when they couldn't understand, she'd be talking like normal. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, that's, listen, you don't know what they know and what they understand, but she's always, and that's what I've adopted, right? I don't treat my kids like they're kids. I treat them like like I treat somebody else because that becomes a norm, right? I don't shelter them from stuff. I swear repeatedly in front of my kids. I've right? noticed. Repeatedly, like vulgarly, and you'll never hear one of my kids swear because they know that's not language for you until you're old enough, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and and But if I don't swear and I create this universe of this, Thing that doesn't really exist in the world because they're out there, the, the bus driver, I don't care what it is, they're right. hearing swear words, right? It doesn't exist. So I, I try to make life as realistic as possible for it and just give them the tools on how to cope with it, right? But speaking of kids, right? And you're a big Disney guy. I am. Right? I heard that you worked at Disney World. I did. I did. Oh. That, what, what is the sound effect? I don't. Oh. Oh, it's, that's, that's it's the, the same rock s- version of uh, you know a Disney song. I, like I thought it was the cruise ship sound I hear every mo- every Saturday morning. On any <laughs> of <that> stupid cruise <laughs> ship. Oh, did you live that close oh, to yeah. the port? Uh, right off of it. <laughs> so, so, but you weren't just like a regular like part time employee there. How long ago there. was this? This would have been uh, 2004 to about 2007. It was not, actually my longest job not ever. Not long ago, really. No, no. That was my longest job ever until I worked with LFD. It was when I was in college. I, I At just, the resort. Well, no. I started as a pirate, which is, this is this is somewhat Can, can we hear a pirate voice? Dude, you and I are matey. <laughs> <laughs> I walk to the plank daily. That's funny. That's so, pretty no, good. So, no, I... Um, I actually worked at Pirates of the Caribbean. Were you were you an an actor or were you one of the? Well, we were all technically always on Correct. stage. So I, I was a cast member. I was I worked in the retail store. Okay. Um, which was kind of I mean it was, it was like the third busiest retail store. So you in had to park. dress up yeah. as a pirate and, oh, dr- work, and work the retail every store day. in character every day. Th- every that day. is a dream of mine. It was. It, here's the thing. <laughs> Dude. I, I tell people this. So I did that for a year and a half. I used to sell the little glow toys on Main Street during the her uh, during the uh, parades. The parades, yeah. 
But I tell everyone, and I told myself this during the time. So I worked in the park for about a year and a half. And then I became a bellman and valet at the Contemporary Resort, which was a ridiculous job. I worked like two days a week. It was all cash. Oh, wow. Now, now, so, this is a normal attire now as a bellman and valet. Yeah, like shorts and shorts. Right, right, and oh, but it's, and a, it's still outfit. Disney. He still has yeah. a costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I always told myself costume in the moment. Costume or a uniform? It's a costume. Costume. Really? Costume. Yeah, it was costume. Everybody's on stage. Like he said, you're, you're on stage and you're backstage. He's got some of the Pirates music going back. Yeah, right. Like that. So I, I, my dream in life was to be the CEO of Walt Disney World. That was what I wanted to do. Okay. Really? So you're up. a real Disney freak. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Because Paul is a Disney freak. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. I, I've become less into it over the last 10 years. Just You've grown up? Yeah, well, you know what? The people <laughs> drive me you, nuts. Paul? The people drive me nuts. The, I love the place. The, I can't stand the people. The visitors. Yeah, yeah. The, the guests. They're, yeah. they're very culty, too. Oh, God, it's awful. Right. So I've slowed down a little bit, but my family still goes every year. My sister goes down for a few weeks. My parents go down there for a month. Um, but I, that was my goal was to be that dream. So I told myself when I was a pirate, I'm like, wow. because It's, it's going to be a it great was, story. It was, awful. it was an awful job. I'm like, but this is going to be the coolest thing I ever did. Then I found cigars, which became twice as cool. <laughs> uh, but, but I did. It was like, man, this sucks, but this is going to be the coolest thing I ever did. And it is. It's a really unique thing to talk about. How, how were these a company you okay, work Okay, for? we've been running long with this segment. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I should just go through it. Uh, we no, we can't. We can't. Oh, We've done that uh, before, yeah. and it screwed us up. Well, actually, wait. This one we can, technically. No, no we can't. No. I'm telling you, we haven't. Uh, we need to get yep. this spot right. and can't. get people pay Keep for it. Keep it lit. All right. <laughs> You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Known the world over as the Rolls Royce of cigars, with unparalleled packaging and superb quality, Gurkha cigars are works of art that feature the rarest and best tobaccos in the industry, offering a flavor profile for every palate. The highly rated Gurkha brand creates a luxurious experience for even the most discriminating cigar smoker. So treat yourself today with an unparalleled cigar smoking experience. Visit GurkhaCigars.com to find a purveyor of Gurkha cigars near you. Placencia Cigars has been one of the world's leading growers of first-class tobacco since 1865. Today, Nestor Placencia Sr., together with the fifth generation of the Placencia family, continued the legacy. With over 3,000 acres of quality tobacco fields, they are makers of quality cigars, including Alma Fuerte, ranked among the top 10 cigars in major publications. Find them in your local premium tobacconist stores around the country. Placencia Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Hello, this is Glenn Case, owner of Christoph Cigars. Smoking a cigar is all part of the experience. For me, there's nothing better than gathering with friends after an amazing steak dinner and smoking my GC Signature Series paired with a fine glass of scotch. Good conversation and a few laughs is always better when smoking Christoph. Start enriching your downtime. Go to Christoph.com and click on the Discover Your Christoph tab to find the Christoph cigars that are right for you. Upgrade your downtime with Kristoff. Ventura Cigar Company is a boutique cigar brand born in sunny Southern California. Ventura Cigar Company is on a mission to create memorable, complex cigar blends that excite the senses and reward discriminating palates. Experience the Cigar Aficionado number 13 Cigar of the Year. The archetype, Axis Mundi. Rise up, step up, look up, fire up, and leave compromise behind with Ventura Cigar Company. Check them out online at VenturaCigar.com. Make your next bold journey an epic one. When it comes to cigars, only one brand delivers intense, unforgettable experiences, Camacho. In continuing this fearless tradition, Camacho brings you the newest addition to its arsenal of badass, the new Camacho BXP. Intense, box-pressed, and crafted with rugged American broadleaf fillers from Pennsylvania. Available in Connecticut, Corojo, and Ecuador. Outfit your next bold journey with the new Camacho BXP. Want to be in the know and lift your cigar game? Join the Monte Cristo Social Club and stay connected with the latest cigar news. Discover events near you and see what's trending. The Monte Cristo Social Club is a place to stay connected to get the inside scoop and feel like an industry insider. Members can look forward to exclusive members-only benefits, special discounts, and details on how to gain VIP access to some of the most extravagant cigar events, New members receive an exclusive gift just for signing up. The Monte Cristo Social Club. Get in the know. 
Since their humble beginnings in 1998, Drew Estate has believed that the production floor is the crossroads between art and passion and where the real magic takes place. Drew Estate Master Blender Willie Herrera has crafted a unique medium bodied line extension that is creamy, lush, and ultra smooth and finished off with a flawless shade wrapper that delivers satisfaction in spades. Continuing the story from their factory floor, it is with great bravado that the Drew Estate presents Under Crown Shade, a true Drew experience. Bold and complex. That is the new Romeo San Andres by Romeo Lieta. Using the very best San Andres wrapper leaf available in the market, Rafael Nadal and AJ Fernandez collaborated together to create a new standard among San Andres cigars. Medium to full-bodied, this cigar is bountiful in both flavor and aroma. Available nationally for the first time, Romeo San Andres is a cigar you do not want to miss. Make sure to get one today at your local tobacconist. Romeo San Andres by Romeo Lieta. Welcome back. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio. Broadcasting live. <laughs> I am Adam K., the Brewmeister. With me, of course, Honest Dave. I listen to this music at home, just so you know. Like, I have background I know. Disney Park music. I am aware. I have rock speakers in name, my backyard. You name, know, name that tune, Paul. You know it's like just a cult kid farm in Disney, right? Stop it. You it don't is. know what you're talking about, dude. You don't you, you don't There's get the no history, wholesome, you don't No, I do, and I appreciate the history. It of has nothing Disney, to do with the whole thing. But today it is nothing but a machine kid farming cult. No. Coincidentally, okay. Disney uh Disney theme parks just went completely smoke free. Yes, there's all over. Just it is. this was it this week uh, or last uh, week, right? Yeah, yeah, last week. So they went smoke free at Magic Kingdom, but now they're serving alcohol at Magic Kingdom. So Which is, I mean, so they're picking and choosing the vices. Right. right. Exactly. Right. You know they used to sell uh, Disney World, Walt Disney themed, uh, sorry, branded cigarettes Ashtray. and ashtrays. Ashtray. I have one. At my, I have an ashtray yeah. at my. Oh, cigars I, too. Oh yeah, I have a cigar ban, and there's actually a gentleman I believe. Disney was a cigar smoker. Yeah, he yeah. was a cigarette smoker too. A cigarette smoker. Oh, right? they, they had cigarette. branded oh, you know. tobacco products. It was crazy, and it's I mean, there's a huge historical like collection on. I mean, you can collect this stuff. It's yeah. got a ton of money. I, I have, have a cigar bunch band. of stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I have I have the ashtray. I have the Walt Disney World ashtray from like, and that wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was like in the late seventies. They you, still had them. Do you freak out when you get on on a plane and it's still got the ashtray and the armrest? Yeah, because I think I'm gonna die. I have seen <laughs> right. that too. That's funny that you say well, that. You, right? you know why they have it there though? They still make them with ashtrays. No, they really? don't. Oh yeah, some, not, not in the armrest, but they uh, they still have the ashtray in the restrooms. So if you ever walk in. The lavatory has an ashtray. The reason I why is if somebody lights up, they have something to put it into. I haven't, ah. I haven't been in a lavatory in about <laughs> 20 years on an airplane. I don't even know what they look like anymore. So, I know. I don't understand that. So, and you've flown internationally. Like We talk about it. I have to fast. Yeah. Well, listen, I never fly direct, so I always plan stops. Right? So I, don't, I don't mind stops. Ugh, flights, it's a right? nightmare. Get me direct. But, but I just I just fast and don't drink before I go. And, um, you know, or, or if I'm short flights, like we usually like locally, we all stop in Atlanta, whatever. Then I'll drink up because I know I'm getting off for an hour in between right. flights, wherever. But yeah, I, I, I haven't. And the last time, actually, I lie. The last time, because I had lost a lot of weight before our wedding, so I, I was down to maybe when we got married about 320, 320 pounds. So, um, is that doable to get into the? Oh, comfortably. No, okay. No, 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 let me take it back. <laughs> I was gonna. Say, I was able to get because I'm tight in there. Wait, I was able to get through the door comfortably. Comfortably, okay. But it's still tight. I was able to use it, right? I remember. I remember sitting where on the first class seat. I, we were going to um, Amsterdam, <laughs> um, and um, I remember seeing like I hadn't been on a plane for a while. I'm like, should I go in the laboratory? My wife's like, go for it, do it. See, it was like a big thing, right? <laughs> this is before the plane takes off, and I jump in the laboratory, and I, and I come out like, yes! yes! Everybody's looking at me my plane. And the steward's like, um, should we call security? <laughs> nope, don't do I'm it. So All right, excited. gotta go. Keep it lit. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. We are family. Stop right there. A, I hate the song. B, I can't sing. Dan Blunt here for Alec Bradley Cigars. I'm making a point, though, and that's Alec Bradley Cigars is a family operation. Alan Rubin named the company after his two sons, Alec and Bradley, when they were just tykes. Now they're grown up, working alongside their dad, making the best damn cigars you ever smoked. So join the family. Alec Bradley Cigars. 
Toscano cigars have been pleasing the palates of cigar enthusiasts for centuries. What began as an accident is now a unique and delicious smoking experience passed down through generations. Whether you're a full-bodied cigar lover who appreciates the power of our Toscano original hand-rolled in our factory of Lucha, or someone who prefers a light, smooth cigar in our Toscano Classico, you become part of a Toscano experience. A unique smoke with 200 years of history and tradition. Cigar enthusiasts, did you know your personal freedom to enjoy a fine cigar is affected by some form of smoking ban in all 50 states? Additionally, taxation on premium cigars is at its highest level in history, with some states taxing at an astronomical rate of 75%. Finally, there's a solution. CRA, Cigar Rights of America, is the first and only nonprofit public advocacy association fighting for your freedom to enjoy a fine cigar. Don't just sit there. Become part of the solution. Become a CRA member today. Membership is only $35 a year. That's less than $3 a month. And as a special bonus, CRA will send you two limited edition cigars as a way to say thank you for joining. Visit CigarRights.org for more information and to become a member. The Oliva family, the makers of some of the most affordable yet highest rated premium cigars available. For seven straight years, Cigar Aficionado has rated Oliva as one of the best cigars of the year. And Oliva has a cigar for all smokers. From the newly released Gilberto Oliva Reserva to the bold and rich Oliva Serie V. Oliva cigars can be found at a tobacconist near you. So always ask for Oliva. An unbeatable value and uncompromising quality. The Oliva family of cigars. A brand more than 100 years in the making. Particulares was established in Havana, Cuba in 1895, operating as an elite factory that would later introduce the world to classic brands such as Byron, Particulares, and even Monte Cristo. Now, Sindicato Cigars is proud to bring this historic brand back to life, partnering with the legendary Topsa factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, to reimagine this Cuban classic as a modern-day Nicaraguan puro. Transport yourself to a bygone era of Cuban nostalgia with Particulares by Sindicato. For more information, visit syndicato.com. Monitor three humidors at once from one simple device. Caring for your cigars is easy with the new PuroTemp wireless hygrometer from Zycar. You now have the ability to monitor the humidity and temperature in three humidors without even having to open them. Ensure protection by setting simple alerts that will warn you when your cigars are not in the optimal environment. Like everything Zycar, this is backed by their lifetime warranty. Stop by your local tobacconist to purchase yours today. Zycar for life. To Affinity and beyond, that is where Affinity Cigars will take you. These mild to medium cigars use only the finest select high-grade Ecuadorian Connecticut tobacco, creating a cigar that delivers a smooth, rich, creamy smoke with the gentleness of a mother's touch. Affinity Cigars have become America's go-to cigar for that flavorful yet unintimidating smoking experience. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer. Welcome back. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio, broadcasting live. I am Adam Kane, the Brewmeister. With me, of course, Tony Gabe. And uh, Paul, the producer, John Carney. Hey, hey, hey. Here is our special guest. John, thanks for driving all the way up from Miami. It's always an adventure. Jumping on 95 at any time of the day. The weekend is truly special. I was going to say, the Saturdays are pretty good. Yeah. Early Saturday morning, everybody's still hungover and drunk. It, it was so cruise, relaxing. Right? I, I just I just sat on cruise control for the first time in probably like six years. Uh. It, was, it was a beautiful ride up. You uh, you ride motorcycles? No, I don't. Yeah. I, 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 early Saturday safe. morning rides are, are good, right? Mm-hmm. Not Sundays because then you got all the church goers and it's a little scary. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, early Saturday morning rides are nice. Anyway, it's time to this week to see what's the scoop with Coop. Hey, y'all, what's my theme music? The Scoop with Coop. Breaking industry news. Hear it first on KMA Talk Radio and cigar-coop.com. There we go. There we go. (laughs) Coop Loop, what is happening? Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, John. How's Pittsburgh? 
Oh, I, I hit Permanti's at 3.30 in the morning. Is that the, is that the sandwich place? Oh, yeah. You're, with the fries yeah. on top. Yeah, I, 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 oh. you know, that was like the most unimpressive food photo. Like, I got no, like, excitement looking at that. First off, I mean, sandwiches in plain white bread? Eh. <laughs> oh, was it that good? It was good. I mean, Abe, I mean, you're on celery sticks right now. So <laughs> Which you, you'd figure a, a food pick is like porn for me right now. But <laughs> that picture didn't do anything for me. And you guys were all drooling at Fred Ruiz out with pom-poms cheering on the side like, oh, I'm so jealous. You know, like, hey, it didn't even look that impressive. Listen, at 3.30 in the morning um, to get a sandwich like that, um, it's a deal. It's yeah, a deal. Let me it's tell you something. With the price at 3.30 in for. the morning, White Castle looks impressive, okay? Well, I love Abe White Castle. It, it, there you yeah, go. Sometimes the photo doesn't do justice. Well, Permani's, oh, Permani Brothers is like an institution there, too. Right. Like, that is the place that yeah. you go for. for What's the best sandwich they got there? The, uh, the, you got uh, the, you had the, just a regular pastrami one, right? So just regular sandwich. I got the gabagool. Yeah, I got the gabagool. gabagool. Yeah, they have Ooh, the names and stuff for them. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I just go in and get the whatever's the classic one. When I don't go by the names, I just get like the, give me the classic. See, see bread is a, bread is a major element for me. Yeah, but maybe they make the bread sandwich. there. You don't know. It's not like you're you not know, taking Wonder Bread. Listen, out. white bread, plain white bread is like sweet and sour chicken. Okay, even when it's great, it's sweet and sour chicken. You know, you, 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 you're not, not, not yeah. tearing down any houses with that. So, anyway, all see, right. John, John will appreciate this. Though. Let me just say one thing. So it's lunch for me right now, and I can't have meat on Fridays, right? <laughs> So I had to wait till after midnight to have this sandwich. That's hilarious. So I had not had permanent margin, so I well, waited till after midnight, and I well, got there at three thirty in the morning. I well, said so you got there at three thirty, so you didn't. You, you waited quite a while, so it didn't seem like it was that difficult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I was at Island Gym before that, so he, he doesn't sleep. So. Oh, so he does sleep. It's amazing. All uh, right, what's yeah, what, what's the scoop this week? Um, Espinosa Cigars uh, has a release their shipping uh, a new installment of the La Laranja series. It's called the La Laranja Reserva Escuro. And it's a cigar that uh, they actually kind of uh, had a soft debut at La Zona Palooza. And this is a Maduro uh, installment of the La Ranja series. Oh, that's the one we got to taste. Yep. Yeah. I had one. At La- yeah. I had one. It was actually really good back then. You yeah. had a nice yeah. one with a real label on it. Yes. Mine, mine, Hector put like a piece of tape on it and wrote on it, yes. La Ranja M- Maduro. Yes. You put it in between two pieces of white bread as well? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. French fries. Right. Yeah, so what's really cool about this cigar is it, it's using uh, Laranja's Brazilian for orange, uh, and the Scuro's uh, Brazilian for dark. It is using a Brazilian wrapper, but they're using Brazilian Matafina, which is the first time Espinosa's worked with that type of wrapper. And it's also a cigar that they're working out of the San Latino factory with A.J. Fernandez, so it's not actually coming out of Arizona, uh, but they're getting some really good tobacco from A.J.'s factory to work with that right now. Nice. All right. Very cool. We'll make sure you yeah. can find that on store shelves soon. What else yep. is happening yeah, this be, week? Uh, Crown Heads is bringing back the Le Carême Bellicosos Finos, which was a limited edition of the Le Carême series, which is their Connecticut Broadleaf box press line. But Bellicosos Finos was a limited installment, um, which is a rounded uh, Bellicosos uh, Fino shape, that classic Cuban shape. It's a five and a half by 52. Uh, so they've brought it back once again for 2000. 19, and it's going to be a production of about 2,500 12-count boxes. There's going to be plenty of cigars to get there. And um, you could definitely find that uh, starting to hit the shelves in, looks like, April there. So definitely something to look forward to there. Let me ask you a question, Coop. Is it me, or just does it seem like those guys are doing this industry, like, part-time? This is like a Um, part-time career for them. I I I I haven't read it like that. I that's read the it like feeling that. I get. Like, I, like we, like you just said, Crown Heads. Like, oh yeah, yeah, they're they're in the industry still, right? It's like I, I don't know. I, they're not out there working it. I just, don't, I don't know. You know, I, I kind of get the sensation like it's like a hobby. Well, I mean, we're working on getting them on the show, right? It's okay. Well, so ask, we can ask. I'll them. ask them when we get them on the show. I'm not going <laughs> to change my opinion. <laughs> you know, I mean, I said it on the air. I, there's nothing. I'm hiding my opinion, but I, kinda, I just kind of feels like it's a. More of a, I love like on Shark Tank. This is not a business. It's a hot when Mr. Wonderful says that to somebody. You, know, you don't have a business. You have a hobby. Well, some people need to hear that, I guess. Well, they do. But I, I mean, get I, that all the time. All the time. <laughs> 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 You're a perfect person to ask that question. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not super familiar with their with their line of cigars. Uh, I know they have a lot of different different 
you know, brandings and whatever, like the J.D. Howard or something I used to smoke. Um, I, I am a cigar smoker, so I, you know, I smoke other things occasionally. Uh, my my challenge with, with them is I'm not quite sure what's limited edition, what's not. Do they have regular production? Because That's my it's challenge. not concise, and there's a lot of come and go, come and go, right? Mm -hmm. So it just seems like... It, I don't know. To me, they seem like a limited edition cigar company. I don't know if that's what it is. I, I don't I, think I'm just I don't, I don't think that's, to stir I, anything. No, no. Just, that's the way I look at it. As Your opinion consumer. is valid. I mean, I just don't think that's what they're trying to do, which is why I'm saying that it almost seems like they're doing it part time, mm -hmm. right? Sorry, I didn't mean to tang tang tangentize there. Not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. You know, I think they have, a, you know, as far as the limited editions go, I think last year they, they really didn't come out with a new line. And I think they needed to kind of take a break from coming out with a new regular production line, give some attention to those lines. My opinion is the limited editions keep things, keep things interesting for them, at least. Well, okay, they can give something new, but I, I do think they need to focus much more on their, their core lines, which are very good. <laughs> this just in breaking news from Coop. Crown Heads announced on social media they are a full-time right. cigar company. <laughs> <laughs> First with Cigar Coop on KMA Talk Radio. Wow, I didn't even know we recorded that. That's, That's a good funny. one. Coop, what else is going on? Uh, more, more stuff. There was a big hearing down uh, in uh, Tampa. Uh, Marco Rubio held a field hearing. Um, the notice kind of went out for this, like, like really A week short. ago. It wasn't a lot of... It was like a week ago a week I found out about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was kind of... In fact, we, it didn't, wasn't, we didn't even get... We didn't, it wasn't yeah, enough time for Skip to buy any ad adequate clothes for the event. Oh my god! Or, 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 or come by and do the. Uh, <laughs> right. <thing show. laughs> I heard he was there like in jeans and flip flops or something. Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, it is Florida. Oh it is Florida. <laughs> I, I, I heard the hearing uh, going to Pittsburgh. I don't think there was anything like if you're a hardcore cigar and you've heard it before. But again, it's kind of I think the uh, audience is going to. I think the messaging uh, reaches a different audience, which is more the mainstream audience. But you, um, I heard Jeff did a very good job there. Drew Newman was there as well. They had a few other folks. Um, and then everyone got their photo ops with Marco Rubio. That was like, I think I saw more photo ops with Marco Rubio than, than information that came out of there. You know, and that's kind of the argument. You know, we have a KMA meeting weekly before the show, and it's kind of what Paul and I were talking about last night. It's like, look, man. The FDA is just beat. It's a beat part of our segment. It's a beat part of our show. I mean, if there's something news breaking, we should talk about it. But I don't even want to even bring it up to manufacturers anymore because it's like it's an auto tune out almost now, right? right. We've heard the same stuff regurgitated. All these things that we hear and nothing ever goes there's anywhere. No, it's just right. Well, it's and everyone has a different collection of talking points, right? And with their agenda, but they've and all been whatnot. covered. Mm -hmm. All the all the talking points have been covered at this point, right? Uh, 100%. It's just a stagnant swamp of a topic at this point, as far as I'm concerned. When right? it gets brought up to me, the first thing I am I, I do is go back into my brain and recollect what I say, so I say what I normally say, right. I regurgitate it, right. and then I'm like, how do I end, end this discussion so I can actually talk about something else? Prevalent at the point, right? Yeah, and yeah. It's not that it's not prevalent, but it's like, it's almost frustrating as, one, I am a consumer, two, I am in the business, right? And it's almost frustrating that you go through all these motions and, and, and things, and we've sent in petitions, and we've signed people up for CRA, and all this stuff, and it just seems like it just nothing ever happens. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, yeah, ahead. I agree. We are in a hamster wheel. Everybody was asking, are you driving FDA. out to Tampa? Like, no, not really. Well, it's part of the industry. You know, we are regulated now as an industry by the FDA, and there's obviously that's something that we work on. It's just part of the job now. Uh, in, in my reality, it's what, what's going on with the FDA. Well, well, they regulate my industry, so right. that, that's what's going on with it. And uh, you know, hopefully, we're they haven't working figured out them. how yet, but yeah. they want to. Yeah. Yes. So hopefully, how we'll or work what with they're them. really regulating. Or, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, we're working with them so it works out in you know our favor. But that, that's the way I look at it. For me, it's just part of my job now. Like, what's going on with the FDA? Well, they they regulate my, you know, other tobacco products. There we go. All right. So, Coop, what's coming up this week on cigar-coop.com? Uh, we'll be reviewing uh, Nick. Malolo's Tabernacle Habanano. Okay, tabac no, let me say it again. Tabernacle Habana Seed, uh, Connecticut 142. And you'll also see a review of uh, one of the surprise TAA cigars from last year, um, the Monte Cristo's uh, TAA release. Oh, all right. Which was a surprisingly, uh, fell under the radar. I mean, the LaFleur one is, was, was one of the epic ones, I could tell you as well. It was a great one. But that Monte Cristo fell under the radar, I felt. This year, oh, there you go. Last year. Very good. Make yep. sure you. Ch all right. Yep. We will definitely. Oh. oh, oh! Look at this. He comes prepared. Guys, there he goes. Yes. There you go. Twenty dollars cigar. <laughs> All right. Go. Enjoy Pittsburgh. Uh, enjoy a sandwich after midnight, and uh, <laughs> we will talk to you in two weeks.
Sounds good. Take care. All right. Make sure you check out cigar-coop.com for all the latest news, information, and high-quality reviews about the cigar industry. All right. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we will see this week who belongs in a cigar insane asylum. Keep it lit. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. With over 20 years in the cigar industry, Eric Espinoza has done it all. He began in retail, became a sales manager, developed and owns his own brands, and today is internationally known as a manufacturer of top-quality premium cigars. Nothing gives Eric more pleasure than to be able to make his own cigars for consumers worldwide to enjoy. Experienced cigars made in the Espinosa way. La Ranja Reserva, Murcielago, 601, and Espinosa Habano in Connecticut. For more information, visit EspinosaCigars.com. A brand more than 100 years in the making, Particulares was established in Havana, Cuba in 1895, operating as an elite factory that would later introduce the world to classic brands such as Byron, Particulares, and even Monte Cristo. Now, Sindicato Cigars is proud to bring this historic brand back to life, partnering with the legendary Topsa factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, to reimagine this Cuban classic as a modern-day Nicaraguan puro. Transport yourself to a bygone era of Cuban nostalgia with Particulares by Sindicato. For more information, visit syndicato.com. Hey, fools, how about a game of cutthroat? It's your funeral. That's my kind of game. Arnold, I hope your pool playing is better than your choice of cigars. What do you mean? Wow, tough crowd. Here, try this recluse cigar. You're going to need all the help you can get. Don't be stingy. Let me get one of those. Recluse. Wow, that's a good smoke. Now I can bring my A game. I think you should stick with that recluse cigar and work on your B game because you don't have an A game. And I know a little something about games. Boom. Ooh, that's cold. Want to be in the know and lift your cigar game? Join the Monte Cristo Social Club and stay connected with the latest cigar news. Discover events near you and see what's trending. The Monte Cristo Social Club is the place to stay connected to get the inside scoop and feel like an industry insider. Members can look forward to exclusive members-only benefits, special discounts, and details on how to gain VIP access to some of the most extravagant cigar events. New members receive an exclusive gift just for signing up. The Monte Cristo Social Club. Get in the know. Quality and value are always the two biggest determining factors for consumers when making buying decisions. Casa Bella by Sindicato Cigars offers superior flavor, quality construction, and an affordable everyday price. Completely handmade in the Dominican Republic, these value-priced, smooth yet flavorful cigars are comprised of Dominican and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, and they're available in natural and Maduro wrappers. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Casa Bella Cigars. Lights, camera, action. Real Clips Barbershop brings you all that is good about old school barbershops in a new cinematic themed environment. Whether you need a traditional cut, fade, blowout, or even a straight razor hot towel shave, our master barbers will get you right. All while enjoying iconic scenes from some of your favorite movies. Right from our video screens built into the mirrors. Visit RealClipsBarbershop.com. That's real, R-E-E-L, ClipsBarbershop.com for a location near you or to make an appointment. After one visit, we know. You'll be back. Insurance companies have a very unique business model that the general public doesn't understand. Insurance companies make profit only one way, taking in premiums and paying out less on claims than they take in premiums. In doing this, they oftentimes deny legitimate people with viable claims fair compensation. We know accidents happen. They happen every day. The good thing about insurance is it helps people do the right thing when they've caused accidents. You know, if I cause an accident, the first thing I want to do is make sure the person is okay, the the person's taken care of. Insurance gives us the ability to do the right thing. Unfortunately, the insurance company uh, treats people like statistics instead of human beings. And that's why you need an experienced attorney to make sure the insurance company does the right thing. Baker and Zimmerman, defending the injured. 800-866-LAWS. Welcome back. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio. Uh, This, the lovely 6th of April. I am Adam K., the brewmeister. With me, of course, on a stage. Man, is this the last segment of the show? Yes, it is. My I, cough button is so far away from this me. I'm just flew, complaining. This episode flew so 
bringing that. Because when you have a guest that can, like, you know, have a chit chat and talk, mm-hmm. yeah, it's awesome. A- every show I've ever been on, I get it goes way over. And, and with the ones where we have time frames, I mean, I get cut off all the time. I'm just a perpetual talker. <laughs> so like when Paul asked me, he's like, is there anything particular you want to talk about? I'm like, I'm going to talk about really right? anything that you guys talk about. And we didn't even talk about AOC today. Oh, I don't even want to hear it. I can't, I can't, this gives me, it triggers me. I'm a, it's my millennial She's thing. one of my triggers, yeah, too. she triggers me. She triggers me because I, I never feel more despair in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm exaggerating? When I see her talk, and every time she opens her, her mouth, literally opens her mouth. And the fact that people listen to her. Look, and- my, my wife doesn't really know. She doesn't. She's not really that in depth in the politics, right? right she right. she leans a little more to the right, but she's not that. But and I just told her, I said, "Look, you don't know much about her. You know, I just want you to listen to her. You don't even know it need to be relevant of the topic she's talking about. But tell me what you're talking away." And she's and she goes, like, "Is this like the dumbest person on earth?" I'm like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So I get despair when I see her or hear her talk, and then re- think that there are people who think that this is like the second coming of the leftist party. So it freaks me out. Yeah, it's it's definitely challenging. I mean, we were talking off the air about the one where she was uh, where, where she was taking on a different sound. She, she of was her ta- voice. she was talking black. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so she she was trying to. I use my wife. As, I use my wife as a barometer. You, for yeah. that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I'm proud to be a bartender. No, that was the self. No, but I, I can't right. do it. Right, ready? Yeah, I was a bartender. Ain't nothing wrong with that, <laughs> right? It was this whole thing of her talking in this. It was an Al Sharpton event, right? So the crowd was probably black people right right and it's funny because in those situations where i'm not really sure where the reaction i use my, <laughs> I use my wife as the barometer i let her like well, how do you take it's like, just she sounds like she's in a poet cafe because that's what it is <laughs> because she's like she, she was talking like no we're not you know is there something wrong with making your neighbor food no we ain't you know i was like, I was like holy cow <laughs> death death <laughs> politics with aoc oh my gosh <laughs> anyway this week let's see who belongs in a cigar insane asylum Welcome to the Cigar Asylum. Did you know I'm utterly insane? We all go a little mad sometimes. Where logic and reason cease to exist. This week, we belong to a Cigar Insane Asylum brought to you by Sealy and the Asylum Cigars. I do have to say, going back to AOC for a second, yeah. like I'm a little tough, I can only hope that Bernie and her run together as a campaign because it would be like the best Dumb and Dumber campaign oh, ever. That, like I already got like a hundred memes lined up it, it, for it, Dumb and Dumber campaign. The SNL a Dumb and Dumber come out of that. campaign. Hopefully, Larry David. A Bernie Cortez. Him. You know, it would be social media gold. Oh, gold, man, gold. <laughs> I just have to admit though, it took me a sec because I did not understand when you kept saying AOC and referring to her as AOC. I was like, it took me a second. I was like. Oh, yeah, that chick. I, oh, yeah. Because like, I block her out of my mind. So yes. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't know that that was the, the moniker given oh, to her that's, either. That's but. the moniker. That's the moniker for AOC. All right, so here we go. This week's Insane Asylum. This week's inductees need to rethink pranking their friends. Brandon Perez, 23, and David Salt, 24, of New Jersey, were just looking to prank their friend when things turned life-threatening. The two were hanging out at a friend's house having a great time until one of their friends who had not been named, fell asleep. And as everyone knows, this is party fail and must be punished by the prank. Did you have a fall asleep prank? No. You? No. Nope. We de- I definitely had a fall. If you passed out drinking, I'd shave one of your eyebrows off. Oh, that's messed up. Just one. We did sharpies oh, it was and stuff. brilliant. No, I would sharp... I would sh- I shaved four eyebrows in the course of my life. That's awful. Just one. The best was one of these employees. I'd gone away on my first trip. We got time? Yeah. yeah. I'd yeah, gone yeah. away on one of my first trips after I was working the family business with my dad. And when I was so paranoid when I left. My, my my stock guys did a great job. I came back and everything was neat. Displays were great. I said, dude, I'm throwing you guys a party. I got my kegger, some Geno's Eat Pizza. <laughs> Went to one of their houses. And one of the kids passed out drunk, right? And we literally shaved his whole eyebrow off. One whole eyebrow, right? That's messed up. Now, they had to come to work the next day. And so did I. So I'm figuring out these guys are going to be late. But sure enough, I'm looking down. I see them walking down. It's like 7.30 in the morning. They walk in. I say, good morning, good morning. The kid with the one eyebrow looks at me and says, good morning. I'm like, okay. And then he goes. Oh, he didn't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wait, and they're working all day. So I pull the guy. I said, dude, what do you say? He's not even mad. He goes, he doesn't know. <laughs> and none of them told him. None of them told him. So oh, I'm, my I'm, God. I'm, I'm not BSing the story. 12.30, 12.45, it's lunchtime. And these guys would always, um, you know, they would always make their, like, little lunches. They would get, like, quesadillas or whatever. they cook in the back and they'd eat together. They were like a team. And he goes to wash his hands, and all of a sudden you hear screaming from the bathroom <laughs> at the top of his lawn. At twelve forty-five in the afternoon, he realized one of his eyebrows was completely gone, and it made him have to shave the other eyebrow. Yeah, that's because what it you was just do. too much walking around with one eyebrow. Yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, that used to be that used to be my, my big thing if I caught you sleeping Ugh. or passing out drunk. So 
instead of going to the old standbys of writing on their face with a marker or putting whipped cream in their hand. Or shaving eyebrows. Or shaving eyebrows, right? Brandon and David took things to the next level. The duo allegedly set their friend aflame while he was sleeping, according to the cops. They thought it would be funny if this they lit Florida him on fire. Before, is it? No. no. Okay. It's got to be. No. It's, it's, Georgia. Well, uh, hold oh, on. Jersey. No, Jersey, I'm sorry. Right? The 27-year-old victim it's was South Jersey. for severe burns at Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. Further, the two men were charged with second-degree aggravated assault, second-degree aggravated arson, and second-degree conspiracy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All because of second-degree burns. Right? Congratulations to the Flame Boys. You are this week's inductees in the Cigar Insane Asylum. Here's what dude. the hell's wrong with people? For real. <laughs> Trying to give someone a hot foot. I mean, what were they thinking? I don't know. You know? I just know we were asking. Like, obviously, that sounded like it could easily have been a Florida story. And we're like, oh, no, it's people from Jersey. Oh, it's people from... It, it's the same people. They just moved down here. They, and now they're true. Floridians. Yeah, that's true. Generations yeah, yeah, yeah. later. Never really <laughs> thought Nothing's of that changed. Most of the Floridians <laughs> really originated from somewhere else, right? Yeah, the Northeast. Like, you know, Jersey's a good spot wow. in New York. So, yeah, easily. This is That could easily have been a Florida story. You oh, know, yeah. Like, here, here would just be normal. Nobody get in trouble for it. <laughs> I almost put my dog on fire this week. <laughs> Do we have time? How? Let's like, end with that. We're yeah, in a we hard break. Three minutes. True, true we story. Three minutes, man. Yeah. I felt so bad for her, right? I, I play VR poker at night, right? It's one of the things I do on the, on the Lanai, right? So um, <laughs> I, I'm out there. So you, you sit out there and you wear gear and you're, you're, you're close from the world. The dog will, while I'm playing, will walk up and you know, put her head on my lap and I'll pet her while I'm playing, whatever. But I can't see But you dog. can't see. No, I mean, but it's, a, it's a great because you can't get within 10 feet of me without her growling. So no one can walk up to me as I'm all... You know, covered up. I am, up. I am technically outside in the backyard, right? <laughs> Nothing's protecting me but a scream from the outside world. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I swear to God, I'm smoking, and the dog walks up right into the ash, right? Oh, <laughs> no. So, I'm in the middle of a good hand, too. I'm like, all right, so I take it off, I look, and I don't see nothing, nothing, nothing too hot. I'm like, all right, it's good. All of a sudden, I start smelling something. Oh, no. And I take my hand off, look. Dog's just sitting there looking at me. I'm calling her over, and she sees the alarm on my face. Won't come. She thinks that she did something wrong. Yeah. So, I run over there. I'm patting her head out. I'm smelling the smoldering smoke. And now she's walking around with a black... She looks like Ash Wednesday. Like, like she just got out of church on Ash Wednesday. Poor dog is walking around with a smoldering like black mark in her forehead. Oh on the top of her head. Poor dog. She, she celebrates more old school. Yeah. Right. 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 Like Santa Claus. Stuff. Right? Poor thing. My kid's like, what happened? Like, yeah, she went to church. It was Ash Wednesday. It's not Ash Wednesday? No. Well, it was just recently. It wasn't too long ago. Right. right. Uh, it might have actually happened. It was only a week ago. So, as the globe trekker you are, where are you off to uh, next, John? So, I will. Uh, I'll be off to Dallas and uh, West Texas. I'm, are you going to the festival next weekend? No, I oh, won't okay. be at that festival. Uh, no. We're not doing a show because I'm going to be at the. Um, uh, is it it's called a, the Sirius? It's, it's called Texas Cigar Festival. Okay, now, Texas Cigar Festival. Money Cristo was serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we used to do it in the past. We we haven't. We haven't the last year or so. I'm doing a little um, traveling to kind of study other people's cigar events, right? It's, it's yeah, it's I'm an going, excellent event. I'm going to Texas next week, and in August we're doing the Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival, which I'll be up with the Dojo Boys. That should be one crazy hell of a weekend. Ooh. Yeah, Rocky Mountain's a, a great. We're not festival. going. Um, we're, I'm going uh, as a as a guest, just kind of oh, study. We didn't get, but you know, now, now I know Jeremy very well, and he's on board with me. So maybe we could do a KMA thing one year. But yeah, no, I'll be off to Dallas next week. We have got some events out there, and then uh, I will be uh, on the road for about three weeks straight. The week after, I'll be in the Northeast, and I'm home for uh, home at my family's place in Maine for Easter. Oh, nice! And then uh, all you guys do week. lobster for Easter? No, no. You know what? We actually had a big discussion my dad and I this last week because uh, we usually do ham, and neither of us like ham. Really? And my mother doesn't really How like. How can you ham. like a honey baked ham? They're oh, so I good. Love it. We, so I grew up in the restaurant business, so we always just had a ham on Easter because we did a Easter buffet. Right, mm-hmm. right. So we just had ham. Got so the ears are over it. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, I think I'm gonna roast. Uh, pork chops. Ooh, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad at all. We always yeah. have ham and managot. Managot. Yeah, I know you don't like that. Managot. By the way, I've, I've seen managot. your interviews. You don't like when people are speaking English and then you right. know say so, uh, me We're off insane. next week. We'll be back in two weeks <laughs> with uh, Brad from Altus USA. Till then, and as always, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the Masters and keep it lit. You're listening to KMA Talk Radio. 
Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on Instagram, too. Yes, it's mandatory. Awarded the 2014 Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year with numerous 90-plus ratings, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Cigar celebrates Tabacalera Perdomo's 20 years as one of Nicaragua's largest premium cigar manufacturers. Using only the highest priming tobaccos grown exclusively by the Perdomo family, the 20th Anniversary Cigar has a tremendous profile with layer upon layer of rich, elegant, complex flavors. Visit your nearest authorized tobacconist today and experience the masterful blend of these Nicaraguan puros. Now available in extremely limited edition pyramid size in Sun Grown or Maduro. The Southeast number one club of the year is Spearmint Rhino. Enjoy $5 lunch specials daily till 3 with the best view in town. Really hungry? Take a bite of their 16-ounce New York Strip Special, only $14.95. Available daily until 10 p.m. Spearmint Rhino, home of $10 Tuesdays all day and all night. And now Thursdays until 8 p.m. Dances are $10. Spearmint Rhino is South Florida's adult playground. Mention at the door, Honest Abe sent you for free entry. For more information, visit SpearmintRhino.com. Keep it lit with KMA Talk Radio.